Call to order the meeting of the Common Council for Friday, May 3rd. Roll call. 12. Not working for him either. There, I got you. Okay. 12 are present, Your Honor. We have a quorum and we'll proceed. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, Chief Litton up to the days here along with uh, Ryan Hintz from Local 141 to lead us in a, in a moment of silence. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank the mayor for giving us uh, this brief opportunity to uh, recognize uh, the uh, tragic events of last week. Um, as all of you, I'm sure, are aware, uh, an Appleton firefighter lost his life in the uh, line of duty um, last Wednesday in a senseless act of um, desperation and, and uh, cruelty and uh, really created a, a, a monumental tragedy for uh, the Appleton Fire, Fire Department, the family of the firefighter, um, the whole community, the region, actually. Um, I just wanted to say very quickly that how proud I am of the members of the Green Bay Metro Fire Department. Um, countless um, members uh, went down to Appleton volunteering their time from last Wednesday uh, all the way through yet last night, um, volunteering to cover in their station to uh, post people at uh, the firefighter's house to keep uh, unwanted visitors uh, away from the family, to posting guard in honor uh, of Firefighter Lundgaard, um, and then about 60 members showing up yesterday at the service and representing Green, Green Bay in a uh, monumental and fabulous way. So couldn't be more proud to serve alongside a group of individuals and a few of them that are standing behind me here. Um, we were very well represented. I appreciate the, the uh, outpouring of support from the mayor and the council. I want to thank the police department, Chief Smith, Commander Warwick, and uh, the whole crew that was down there from the police department as well to support uh, Appleton. And you know, our detectives were uh, are involved in the uh, investigation itself. So, really, a tragic uh, event, um, but it shows you know out of that uh, the humanity of people and the outpouring of support from Appleton and throughout this whole region. So. Um, again, Mayor, thank you for that. I want to introduce uh, Ryan Hentz, who's the president of Local 141. He has something to say as well. Thank you, everyone. Uh, just a little bit about the firefighters lost. Uh, Mitchell Lungard was 36 years old and he was taken last Wednesday. Uh, he was actually a graduate from Southwest High School here in Green Bay in 2000. Um, he ended up joining the Appleton uh, Fire Department 14 years ago. After September 11th, he wanted to do something to, to help the community. He uh, looked in the four branches of the military and decided firefighting was the route that he wanted to take. Um, he left behind his, his uh, high school sweetheart, Lindsay, of 12 years. They had a, a nine-year-old boy named Evan, a seven-year-old boy named Logan, and a four-year-old named Ryan. Uh, he was an amazing father, husband, uh, firefighter, and friend. 
Um, he went to work that day. It was a normal shift. It's, it's a, it was a normal call that we go on every single day in Green Bay. And uh, nobody really knew the fate of that day and what was going to happen. Um, you know, this really could have happened to any fire department in the area with the, with the growing uh, drug problem, violence problem. You know, this is something that, you know, we've had to trade in from worrying about uh, our firefighters being lost in a fire to now we need to add shootings to the, to the list. So um, our profession uses, uh, used to worry about the ultimate sacrifice um, being made in a burning building. Times are changing, buildings burn faster, um, and now we need to add shootings and, and bulletproof vests to the list. So, uh, you know, overall, he'd be greatly missed. Um, the funeral yesterday was a fitting tribute for the man he was. Every person that went up there uh, spoke highly of, of how involved he was in the community, his family, and his profession. So thank you for that moment. I just ask everyone to bow their head for a moment of silence. Thank you. Mayor. Well, thank you, Chief and Ryan, for those words and that moment of silence and for everything you do every day to protect the citizens of Green Bay. Um, and thanks also for the way that you have responded um, to this tragedy and, and worked with um, uh, the city of Appleton and their fire department to support them in this, this time of need. So thank you. Round to approval of the minutes. Entertain a motion to approve the minutes of April 15th, 2019. Moved by Alder from the 7th. Seconded by Alder from the 10th. Are there any corrections that need to be made? Seeing no requests, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The minutes have been approved. Approval of, of the agenda. Alder from the 7th, I'll entertain a motion to amend. Uh, I'd like to uh, take item four from Parks and take that right after item U. And then I'd also like to take item nine from Protection and Policy and item six from Finance and do those at the same time as V1. Okay. Anything else? That should do it, thank you. Seeing no further requests, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. You got a second for the motion? <laughs> thank you, seconded by Alder from the eighth. Uh, seeing no further requests, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed nay. The agenda before you has been approved with those changes. Round of the report of the mayor. Um, so I just wanted to, um, to touch base on a couple topics before we get into the meeting tonight. First, um, the administration has recommended some policy changes for our workforce in the form of more flexible schedules, more accommodating summer hours, and a leave policy that makes room for volunteer activities in the community. This, being, this is being done for two reasons from my perspective. One, to make the city of Green Bay as an employer an attractive 21st century workplace place to do business two to allow our employees to make a difference in the community in a way that fits into their busy lives and schedules these are new concepts for us though certainly not in the corporate world and I appreciate that others might not view things as I do but I do believe we need to get serious about building up and valuing the people who work in this building and in our city facilities across the community municipal budgets as you all know uh, better than I at this point are incredibly unforgiving these days so much of what I would like to do to express my support and gratitude to our employees is out of reach. But the policies this administration is endorsing tonight should not be, do not have to be. These changes are incremental and they're fiscally responsible, yet they also send the message that we are interested in moving this workplace forward and doing it in a way that benefits the community as a whole. I hope our, our council appreciates and supports this goal ultimately. Secondly, there's an item before us that pertains to our relationship with the Oneida Nation. The details, obviously, I can't discuss in open session, but I want to make clear 
that I believe we're in need of a reset here with this relationship. The city recently passed a three-year mark without a service agreement or intergovernmental agreement with the Oneida Nation, which has deprived the city coffers of hundreds of thousands of dollars and gotten us nothing of tangible value in return, in my view. So I'm looking forward to beginning negotiations in a new light, with a clean slate, and with the intention of constructing an agreement between our two governments that is beneficial to the people we represent here. Also wanted to just let alders and the public know that we plan to use a summer schedule of meetings um, coming up here in the, in the summer months, as is the custom in Green Bay. So we'll be meeting once a month from June through September. Uh, feel free to get in touch with my office if you have any questions or suggestions for meeting times. Finally, I, I do want to wish everyone a, a very solemn Memorial Day. Of course, City Hall will be closed to recognize the holiday, and we hope that everyone enjoys the weekend and uh, you know, spend some time thinking about those who gave everything in defense of this country. So that concludes my report. Announcements. Alder from the 10th. Thank you, Your Honor. I've got a couple here. Uh, some of you may be aware of uh, the Jocks family, Joe and Bree. They passed in a car accident on Mother's Day. Uh, Joe uh, was in my district 10. Uh, he was one of those go-to people that I could always rely on when I, when I had a tough issue, and he was always there for us. Great personality, father of five. His daughter was 16, uh, very tragic, and uh, it kind of reminds you of, of what is really important in, your, in our lives. So um, I would like you just to keep your thoughts and prayers for the Jocks family, and um, God bless. Thank you. Thank you all there. Oh, I have one more. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, St. Paul's United Methodist Church on Wilson and Division has a little free pantry on the north side of the building. Uh, supposedly it's the first of its kind in Brown County. Uh, it is filled with non-perishable items and available to anyone who needs it. Thank you. Thank you for that. Alder from the 4th. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, this past weekend, uh, we had another uh, flooding incident in our community. Um, I want to thank um, all those from the city that were involved. Uh, obviously, it wasn't as bad as the one last month or the month before, uh, but it got close. Uh, it obviously ruined the full marathon, but it also affected residents again down uh, along the East River. Um, because I was given information in a timely fashion from DPW, I was able to share that with residents who shared it with other residents. And then I really want to give a shout out to uh, uh, the mayor's chief of staff, Celestine Jeffries, who kept me informed by email all throughout the night with updates that I was able to pass on to those residents. And uh, a few of them got back to me and they were very thankful, even though they were still very uh, worried about their properties and, and, and that. Um, it, it just made them feel good to know that the city cared and was interacting with them to keep them apprised of the situation. So thank you. Thank you, Alder. And Alder from the ninth. Thank you, Mayor. Um, on an upbeat note, I just learned that it is Alder Vanderlee's birthday today. Oh. And he is celebrating his 70th birthday, a tremendous milestone. So I just wanted to recognize uh, and say happy birthday to Alder Vanderlee's today. Thank you, nice to see you. Singing? No singing? No singing. Okay. No, not led by me. <laughs> Thank you, Alder. Any other announcements? Okay. On to recognitions and awards. Chief Smith, I think, has a has a recognition here. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just want to take a moment today to recognize a real all-star in policing here in Green Bay, and that is Sergeant Mike Netzker. He's being nominated. He's been nominated and been awarded uh, from the American Police Hall of Fame and Museum, which is in Florida, uh, the prestigious J. Edgar Hoover Memorial Award. 
Now this is an award that was started in 1985 and so far only across the country since then only 237 people have been awarded this memorial award for J. Edgar Hoover. Only 12 from Wisconsin so uh, Sergeant Nets will be the 13th person from Wisconsin to get this award since its inception 1985. And just so you know, this, is, this award is issued to law enforcement officers who successfully completed additional training and recognizes officers who continue to seek a lifetime of education and advancement. And that's really what Mike Netzker is all about. I've got a, about half of his bio here and we don't have time to go through it all. But it's just, it reads like a chief's dream uh, of an employee. 27 years of law enforcement experience, field training supervisor, 10 year SWAT veteran, teacher, an adjunct facility member at Northeast Wisconsin Technical College for 18 years, training unit instructor, uh, four time, four book author, um, just a fantastic guy. And one of the things that, that many of you know about the Netsker family is the terrible tragedy that they had because of a drunk driver, the murder that occurred of their daughter um, several years ago uh, would cause many people to just give up, quit their job, and, and, and just spend the rest of their life um, in sorrow. Uh, obviously, Mike didn't do that. He used that as an opportunity to really move on and to use that as, a, as an educational tool, which he's done thousands and thousands of times uh, since then. I've seen his presentation several times. It's completely heartbreaking, gut-wrenching, but very impactful, especially on the young people. Um, we gave a sergeant's exam, and the big joke was who's going to be number one. Of course, it was Mike Netzker, number one. And he's wearing the number one badge because he's the first sergeant we made in Green Bay in more than 20 years. But I just want to take a moment today and recognize him and congratulate him publicly for that fantastic award. Well deserved. Thank you. First of all, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to request a shorter podium for these uh, <laughs> presentations. We can do that. But, so I will keep it brief, and, uh, which is very difficult for me sometimes. But I first just want to publicly recognize the American Police Hall of Fame and Museum in Titusville, Florida. Uh, I've driven by the museum sign multiple times, and I never realized the magnitude of what they do for law enforcement until I was notified of this award. So I will be sure to visit there next time, and I would encourage you to as well. But this, this award doesn't happen without an amazing support system that I, I have at home, uh, not only from my, uh, my very patient wife, who I mentioned yesterday, but I'll say it again, that uh, she will not let me get any more degrees. She's made that very clear. Um, but I've also had a, I, I have an amazing surviving son who has become a police officer and uh, a daughter who I think could be a police officer, but she just wants to get married and have babies. And, but I, have a, I also have an amazing set of colleagues, uh, colleagues and uh, mentors who have shared knowledge with me. And I've always believed in passing on the knowledge to make the next generation better. So I will do everything I can to uh, continue doing what I'm doing and making a positive impact on the law enforcement com uh, community not only here in Green Bay, but across the country. I also want to thank uh, the Green Bay Police Department and the City of Green Bay. Uh, as a member of the training unit, I'm able to get access to a lot of training that I'm then able to pass on to others. I've also uh, taken advantage of the ed educational reimbursement uh, programs that are offered through the police department. Uh, the city paid for a significant portion of my master's degree. And uh, even though my uh, doctoral degree is funded in most part by a grant, uh, there, were, there was a uh, small amount that I had to pay out of pocket that was also reimbursed, so I can't be more thankful for that. And also for Chief Smith and the administration for encouraging this level of recognition. Uh, it was Lieutenant Jeff Engelbrecht that uh, nominated me for the award, and I think it's very important that we recognize police officers more uh, each and every day, uh, not only for the risks that they take, but all of our public safety members, our firefighters, our EMS workers, uh, and the like. And as you just heard earlier in this uh, session today, we reflected back on the loss that happened in Appleton. So it's all too very, very real. So I, um, I thank all my fellow protectors out there, including uh, EMS and fire. I consider you all protectors. And I'll do everything I can to continue to uh, make a difference in this community and within the industry. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Sergeant, and congratulations again on the award. Appreciate everything you do for our community to keep us safe. Also have um, a recognition 
up here on the days. Um, and this person is so humble that, um, that I had to find out about um, this award by being tagged on Twitter by the League of Wisconsin Municipalities. Um, attorney uh, Chavez, City Attorney Vanessa Chavez, uh, recently was awarded the, the Rising Star Award from Wisconsin Women in Government. So congratulations. And in my short time here, I've been super impressed with Vanessa's uh, intellect and commitment to the city of Green Bay. So really appreciate everything you do. And now we are on to appointments. Yeah. All from the ninth. I just, I just want to be clear, um, under P4, uh, the Planning Commission, there was a recommendation to appoint an individual to the uh, Business Improvement District, uh, but it is not listed under appointments, and I just I just want to clarify if it's necessary for it to be here as well. Okay. Appreciate that. Director Vonk? I was not in attendance at that meeting because I was at the flood meeting, so I'm not sure in terms of that being passed along. Um, if it's time sensitive, um, I guess we could pull it up this evening. Um, if not, I think we'll just wait till July in terms of posting properly, if that's all right. June. Alder from the ninth. I guess I can verify that it is not time sensitive, but just wanted to make sure that it's listed properly in the agenda. Thank you. Noted. Thank you. So the new appointment in front of us uh, to the Economic Development Authority is John Calwartz at 115 East Walnut, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Term to expire June 1st, 2022. Motion by Alder from the ninth, second by Alder from the second, to confirm the appointment of John Calworts to the Economic Development Authority. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and that item has been approved. We are on to public hearings. So we have a public hearing on the resolution authorizing conditional use approval at 1004 Brett Favre Pass. Is there anyone here who would like to speak to this specific item? Anyone here who would like to speak to this specific item? Anyone here who would like to speak to this specific item? Clerk, please let the record reflect that no one appeared to speak to this item. Under the report of the Redevelopment Authority, May 7th, 2019. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 9th. To approve Report K, which is the report of the Redevelopment Authority from the meeting of May 7th, 2019. Are there any items under this report you wish to handle separately? Number one. Okay. No. We're good. Okay, item one will be handled separately. Hearing no others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and that report has been approved with the exception of item one. What are your wishes regar regarding item approved. one? Second. Motion made to approve by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the first. To approve, all signify by saying aye. Alder from the third. Yeah, I was just wondering if someone from um, city staff can explain this for the record, please. Director Bonk. Sure. Thanks. Um, 
Last year, uh, RDA and Council approved a professional services agreement with Stantec Consulting uh, to do due diligence and, in essence, come up with a concept design plan for the shipyard development. Uh, at the time, uh, it was requested that the service agreement not exceed $800,000. Um, we're well below that in terms of money that we've spent uh, so far. Um, but we are looking at, Stantec uh, had requested some change orders to look at some additional geotechnical testing on the site. Um, we've done, we have reports of, of geotech on the site, um, however, based on what we're uh, proposing to build, uh, they'd like to conduct additional uh, geotech testing, um, thinking it's good practice uh, to do some of that. It's a riverfront site, um, you know, it's a remediated site. Uh, that before we start building structures, we have very good knowledge of what soils on top uh, we are building, uh, as in to prevent shifting or, or movement in, in the future. Um, so with that, uh, we are requesting um, an additional $200,000 be added to that contract. Uh, the change orders um, that were provided so far uh, add about $79,300 onto that contract. Um, this provides a little bit of buffer room for additional testing that may be anticipated uh, as we continue on the project uh, this summer. Uh, one of the things that we'll be looking at, uh, there's a contract awarded. Uh, you'll see Phil starting to go out to both the shipyard site and the breakthrough site uh, in the next few weeks. Um, we'd like to do some additional testing as that goes on just to make sure it's settling properly um, before we start construction. Uh, I, I think uh, Doing some diligence now to understand the soils and what we're building uh, will prevent, uh, hopefully, errors later on uh, if the site does intend to to settle. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, this is um, off the subject. I'm trying to basically open up the PDFs, and I, for some reason, it's not. So I could read some minutes here. I got blank. Can someone uh, assist me? Please. I'll show you. Pardon? Getting You're getting it too? I'm getting it. Oh, okay. I thought I was the only one. No, what do you Thank you. Well, yeah, let, go to anything. <laughs> go to any subject and try to open it up. I get blank. I know we had some issues before. So I. Appreciate the feedback. I'm, I'm done. Okay. Thank you, Alder. Seeing no other requests to speak, all in favor of the motion. Oh, okay. We're yeah, not on the screen here, so apologize for that. Uh, the eight hundred thousand was that was that bonded for last year, and where's the additional two hundred thousand coming from if we? So uh, right now, um, we bonded $2 million, uh, authorized $2 million of expenditures last year to uh, deal with the consulting and the uh, purchases of real estate. Um, from a cash flow perspective, we have not spent that, so we do not anticipate any additional borrowing would be needed. Um, if we go above that threshold, um, part of that would come back for um, when we look to bond for the actual construction of the project, the infrastructure and other pieces. Um, but right now we have funds sufficient to, to cover the expenses, so no additional borrowing will be necessary at this moment. And I'll just confirm with Director Ellen Becker. Yes. Sure. Thank you, Alder. Any other requests to speak? not all in favor of the motion to approve please signify by saying aye aye those opposed nay no the ayes haven't the item has been approved on to resolutions you may under suspension of the rules adopt resolutions one through seven together with one roll call vote Second. there's a motion by alder from the seventh seconded by alder from the tenth to suspend the rules to take up these items with one roll call vote all in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The rules are suspended. I'll entertain a motion to adopt resolutions yeah. 1 through 7. Second. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 5th to adopt resolutions 1 through 7. Please use the board.
Those passed unanimously. On to item M, report of the Improvement and Services Committee, May 14th, 2019. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 8th to approve Report M, which is a report of the Improvement and Services Committee from the meeting on May 14th, 2019. Any items under this report you wish to handle separately? Six B and C. Items five, six B, and six C will be handled separately. Hearing no others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and that report has been approved with the exception of items 5 and 6B and 6C. What are your wishes regarding these items? Second. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 1st, to approve items 5, 6B, and 6C. Yeah. Motion has been made to take those items up separately. Motion made by Alder from the 9th, seconded by Alder from the 10th. Item has been pulled by Alder from the 9th. So we're on item 5 right now? Okay. Um, I'm just going to uh, maybe reiterate some comments that I made at the committee level. Um, about a year ago, probably not even that much, we made a decision not to meet uh, as frequently during the summer months as a council. Um, and, and call it a rookie mistake, but I think the realization that I'm coming to right now is that we are seeing both the Improvement and Services Committee as well as Protection and Policy Committee looking to authorize staff to make decisions in the absence of the committee. And so I, I don't support that, not because I don't think our staff is qualified to make those decisions, but I feel that that is our responsibility as a governing body is to make those policy level decisions. Um, when I look at uh, the discussion at least related to improvement in services in particular, we have an item coming up here in 6C that I'm going to bring up where we're going to be asked to, to cast a vote on a $2.5 million contract um, that staff has recommended, which in their professional opinion is something we ought to move forward with. Um, but, but my objection is that if we pass this policy, staff would award that contract and as a city council, we have no ability at that point to go back and reverse that decision because the contract's already been let. And so I think in the spirit of ensuring that, that we maintain our responsibility and oversight of city-related business, I'm going to uh, oppose this measure as I'm going to later with Protection and Policy Committee as well. Alder from the first. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, it's my understanding, because we've had this, the summer schedule for years, that if there is the, a need for an additional meeting to be called, then an additional meeting is called. So it's not written in stone that there's only one. It does give opportunity for staff to take some vacation time during the summer, which I think is important. Um, but there is opportunity to have a special meeting if one is needed. So I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Any further comments on this item? Motion on item five? Motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Alder from the third, second by Alder from the first to approve. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Nay. The ayes have it. On to item six B. Alder from the 11th. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my question is for uh, Mr. Grenier. On, on this 539,000, Steve, and 700, does that actually, does that parking ramp, does that pretty much cash itself out, or is, is, what is the revenues on that on that ramp where you're doing the repairs right now? We, Director Grenier. <clears throat> we spend somewhere between 500 and $650,000 a year on uh, combined between the three municipally owned ramps, so it's the Cherry Street ramp, the Pine Street ramp, and the Main Street ramp. 
that's necessary because of the age of the ramp and deterioration to keep those ramps in functional shape so that they can continue to serve the patrons that occupy those on a daily basis. So I guess I'm I'm not sure exactly what your your question is trying to tie the the contract back, but what I can tell you is when we when we pass the budget in the fall, uh, the parking budget is part of the overall city budget. The parking division is a special revenue fund, so they do not take taxpayer money, and they do cover their own costs. It's been old as well. And, uh, now, is this actually going to the Cherry Street ramp? All these repairs? No. <laughs> These repairs are split up amongst the Cherry Street ramp, which doesn't have as many because it's not as old. Uh, the bulk of the work is done in uh, a combination of the Pine Street and Main Street ramps. Okay. Thank you, Alder. Any further comments on item 6B? Motion made by Alder from the 9th. Second. Seconded by Alder from the 3rd to approve. All in favor of uh, approving item 6B will signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Item is approved. On to item 6C, Alder from the 9th. Yeah, Mike, have we have we found a fix to open up these PDFs yet? No, I've got a help desk work taken in. But... Okay, that's fine. I'm, I'm going to maybe use round numbers here. So um, the reason I pulled this item, and I'm, again, I'm going to reiterate um, the position that I had at the INS committee. Um, I'm not interested in reneging on the city's commitment um, to do the Colburn Pool project. I think we've been down that road before, um, and I think it's time that we commit to getting this project done. However, my fundamental objection to this is I find it to be fiscally irresponsible for the city to approve a contract for two and a half million dollars, that's a half a million dollars over the engineering budget without a competitive bid. And I think we need to, I mean, if we've got, I mean, when we go back to the elevator discussion that occurred here, I don't know, a month or two ago. I, I, I opposed that project as well because there we also had about a million dollar project without a competitive bid. And so I think we need to start having candid conversations about um, why it is we're not getting these bids. And I know Director Grenier has alluded to that somewhat uh, at our INS meetings. I get it's a competitive marketplace right now. Contractors can cherry pick their projects, but I don't feel that we should um, move in, in an improper way that puts taxpayers at risk by overpaying for projects. Any other speakers? Okay. Alder from the seventh. Yeah, um, I appreciate the uh, Alder's concern, but I, I believe these have been put out, and I don't know what else we can do. I mean, what are we going to hold these projects up again and again and again? I, I think we have to go forward. I. I appreciate wanting to look into seeing what we can do to get more competitive bids, but uh, in the meantime, uh, I don't think we can just keep sending out. I mean, that I, the the elevator was brought up. I mean, that was bid out two or three times, if I remember right, and uh, we got what we got. I mean, we can't just keep holding up these projects and uh, waiting for uh, a competitive bidding that we'd like to see. So. Um, I appreciate the concern, but I just don't know what we can do about it. I'm, uh, if we can come up with a solution uh, for that, I'd, I'd be willing to hear and discuss that. But for now, uh, I believe going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Alder from the 8th. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the seven-year saga of Colburn Pool, <laughs> I think we all want to see it you know, get done at this point. And I understand and appreciate you know, Alder Johnson's concerns and that we don't like one bid on projects. That's not good for anybody. <laughs> I think what's happening with this one, this is the third time around at least, I might even be missing some, might be the fourth or fifth, I don't know. I think you're seeing bitter fatigue and, and uh, distrust. You know, I think we, we actually a couple years ago awarded a contract and uh, you know, we celebrated and we're ready to build a new pool and then the only veto that happened in eight years happened with Colburn Pool. So um, we, we, here we find ourselves now, we, we have three, $3.6 million set aside. It, it's sitting there in an account for this project. So if this is 2.5, you know, even with some of the engineering costs, we're still under the amount we set aside. So it's not, we don't have to go out and get any more money for it. So I, I appreciate it. And I, I think this is a special case in that bidders are a little bit, uh, a little bit hesitant on this particular project. And I think we're, let's get this done. It'll be remodeled and it's going to last another 20, 30 years and it's going to look great. So appreciate your support. Thanks. Thank you, Alder. Any further comments? 
Entertain a motion on item 6C. You ready to do the motion? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm new. <laughs> Thanks, Alder. Appreciate it. All in favor of uh, the motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. On the report of the Protection and Policy Committee, May 13th, 2019. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 9th to approve Report N, which is the report of the Protection and Policy Committee from the meeting on May 13th, 2019. Uh, just a note, item 9 will be taken up as part of the Committee of the Whole. Uh, what, are your what are your wishes regarding this report other than that item? 14. One. All right. Items 1 and 14 will be handled separately. Hearing no others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. I want to abstain on the whole report. I can't open anything up. I'm not voting on anything other than the report. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other alders need hard copies? Abstention has been noted. So we are uh, holding items 1 and 14 separately. Motion made to approve. Yeah. <laughs> I already said that. All right, all in favor of, the of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and the report has been approved. Okay, what are your wishes regarding items 1 and 14? Motion made to approve by Alder from the 7th. <coughs> approve item 1. Made by uh, motion made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the eighth. On item number one, uh, Alder from the ninth. You have the floor. I'm okay on one. Oh, you're good on one. Alder from the third. Thank you. Can uh, anybody from the city explain it? <clears throat> Just give me the gist, please. Alder from the seventh. Okay. Uh, the this just codifies what is already being done in practice. Uh, judges have always had the ability to uh, use community service as part of the penal oh, code. Got it. All right. So Thanks we're just codifying. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Any other speakers on that item? Alder from the ninth on item motion to approve. All right. Seeing no other request to speak, all in favor of uh, motion to approve on item one, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. The item has been approved. All right, item or uh, Alder from the ninth on item 14. Uh, my objection to this is just to remain consistent with my position on the last uh, improvement and services agenda item um, related to responsibility. This should fall under the oversight of okay. council. Yeah. 
Alder from the seventh. Yep, I, I would just like to point out there's a difference here in that this is not staff, but the committee that is in. So it is a, a, a four members of this body that will be. So it is a little different from that. Oh, okay, All right, thanks. Alder from the fourth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I guess I would ask why can't um, the committee approve and then forward it to council? We're still meeting once a month um, during the summer. I, I don't know why we would give final approval to the, at the committee level when the committee is supposed to be meeting before the council each month. And Attorney Chavez. The it's not that it's not that it's not that the, it, this only applies in, issue, in instances where it's time sensitive. So a number of times we have people who are trying to get jobs um, and so we're holding up their server licenses or if they're having an outdoor event, a lot of times the event will occur. It's not the actual application for the, for the liquor license itself. It's usually something that's time sensitive like an outdoor event. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Any other speakers? Seeing no other requests to speak, Mayor. Alder from the third. Thank you. Will the Alder person be notified if there is a uh, outdoor event? The only reason why, correct, because I represent, I believe, over 27 establishments that serve liquor and beer. I'd like to be aware of it. You can amend it to include that they would be notified, that the alder would be notified That'd for the be district. My amendment, Mayor. Yes. Second. Thank you. Motion made by Alder from the third, seconded by Alder from the seventh to event, amend item 14 to notify the alder. Uh, all in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Item has been approved. Report of the Protection and Policy Committee granting operator licenses. Second. Motion made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the first to approve report O, which is the report of the. Good point, Alder. Um, so amendment has been approved to item 14. Uh, the report of the Protection and Policy Committee. I'll entertain a motion to approve the item. Okay. Oh, got it. All right. All in favor of the item, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Nay. The ayes have it. So, question there: We will be notified if there's some type of activity. Yeah, you bet. All right, we have a motion by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the first to approve report O, which is the report of the Protection and Policy Committee granting operator licenses. Any names for which you would like to be recorded as abstaining? All right. That's noted, Alder, thank you. Thank you. Any names under this report you wish to handle separately? Hearing none, all in favor of the report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved, noting the abstention of uh, the alder from the third. We are on to the report of the plan commission, May 13th, 2019. Motion to approve made by alder from the second, seconded by alder from the ninth to approve report P, which is the report of the plan commission from the meeting on May 13th, 2019. Any items under this report you wish to handle separately? Item one will be handled separately. Hearing no others, all in favor? some request to speak on these items the motion made to open the floor by alder from the first second by alder from the third mm -mm. not yet <laughs> all right 
All in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and the report has been approved, with the exception of item one. Motion made by Alder from the 9th, seconded by Alder from the 7th. To approve, uh, and the item has been pulled by Alder from the 10th. You have the floor. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, at this time, I would like to uh, open the floor for interested parties. Motion made to open the floor to interested parties made by Alder from the 10th, seconded by Alder from the 9th. All in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The floor is open. You might want to name and address. Thank Thanks, you, sir. Um, Please uh, uh, state your name and address. Yep. Uh, Steve Serbus from Berner Schober, 310 Pine Street. I'm a part of the design team for the medical office building development going into um, what will be the intersection of Shawano and Taylor Avenue. It was a planned urban development from 2007, just looking to amend it to include the corner where the gas station used to be, kind of right by the roundabout there. It's a simple boundary change to include the entire site for a development of what will be a four-story building. Um, we'll submit the site plan review thereafter. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? Motion made by Alder from the 10th, seconded by Alder from the 5th to close the floor. All in favor of said motion signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Alder from the 10th. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, <clears throat> this uh, project is in District 10. Um, I just want to go on record as saying that I'm hoping that uh, Provea Clinic and the neighbors, uh, especially that live on Gary Lane, will work together to make this project work. Uh, there was a lot of consternation with the neighbors as far as lighting and drainage and height of the building and the fact that it's pretty close. It's not as close to uh, Taylor and Shawano as it could be. Granted, this happened in 2007 when they had this overlay uh, ordinance come into play. Some of the citizens weren't aware of it, they told me. So with that being said, uh, I feel that Provea, they gave a good presentation at the hospital with the neighbors. I think they did a, and the partners that worked with them gave a very good presentation. I feel that they will be good neighbors. And I'm just asking, uh, the fact of the matter is with the overlay zone, they could have built a 10 story building if they'd like. So it's four stories. So with that being said, um, I'm still concerned about the citizens. I, I, you know, I, it's a very busy intersection. You've got one of the busiest gas stations in the county right there on Taylor and, and Shawano. Uh, you've got Myers on one area, you've got Fleet Farm. It's very, very busy. So that, that is a concern too as far as traffic and that. So what, what I'm saying is that I'm, I'm looking that Prevea and the neighbors work together as best as possible and I feel that Prevea will, will do that. That's all I have. <clears throat> what? Do you want, do you want to say something? Okay. Okay. Seeing no other requests to speak. I'm not, I'm not, what? 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 Uh, Alder. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Alder from the eighth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I do have a question. Will um, for Director Vonk, will we as a council be seeing this come back at some point or are we sending it off and just hoping for the best? Director Vonk. Sure. So the, the site plan that was presented in here um, is pretty close to um, what we feel will be submitted. As far as what's before you tonight, the plan unit development amendment, this is the report. The first reading goes on tonight. The second and final reading to codify this uh, will come back to this council in June. Um, once that is approved, the site plan will be handled administratively, and so long as it complies with the PUD, um, it will not come back to, the site plan itself will not come back to this body. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll defer to the elder of the district. Alder from the 10th. 
Well, like I said, part of me was, uh, thank you, Your Honor. Part of me was going to fight this, and I, I'm all about economic development and tax base and all that with the city. I just felt at the time that it could have been handled a little bit better. Uh, we've had situations in the past where we've had uh, developments where some of the neighbors weren't aware of it, and we can talk about a few of those. I just want to avoid those in the future. We really need as a city to be open with dialogue and communication and let the neighbors know. I mean, the neighbors sometimes feel like the world's against them. And uh, I'm speaking on behalf of the neighbors on this. Um, part of me wants to not approve this in my mind. I feel like this is going through. I just wanted to state for the record that I'm looking for Purveya and the neighbors to work together. I feel in good consciousness they will. So with that, I, I will probably approve. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Seeing no other requests to speak, all in favor of the motion to approve, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and the item has been approved. Um, just wanted to make a note that uh, there are a couple folks who are wishing to speak. Um, it looks like on items two and three um, of the uh, report of the Planning Commission. Should we reopen that? Did we vote? Right. Did we okay the rest of the report? Re yes. Second. Motion made to reconsider items two and three by uh, Alder from the eighth, seconded by Alder from the ninth. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Motion made to open the floor by Alder from the ninth, seconded by Alder from the seventh. Uh, to open the floor, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The floor is open. So we have a, a Kim Martin, 1140 West Mason Street. Um, CUP. Can you hear me? Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, the other concern I had was with parking. And I know when I bought my building 30 years ago, we were grandfathered in with parking. Um, my building is just under 2,000 square feet, and I have six parking spots. I was told I was OK because it was grandfathered in. But if we made any changements or improvements, we would have to have extra parking. And I looked it up on Chapter 13 in the zoning, zoning Ordinance on page 205. It says that for retail space, you need to have one, one space per every 250 square feet. For general office, you need to have one parking space per every 300 square feet. Our main concern is just that you keep into account that there's limited parking there already. And I don't know if, there's the, if they have that map that they had before. When we went to the other meeting, there was some kind of map. OK. Well, on the map, it showed that um, there is parking here. But the zoning that they're asking to change and to add on to is going to be taking parking spaces away from here. But he was figuring they have parking here, but he doesn't own that. Um, the printers up front own the parking spot back here. And um, the guy that bought this is looking at adding on building here and losing half of his parking. So it's kind of a concern to us as to how the parking matter will, will be handled. And um, like I said, I know when you add on, you have to bring things up to code. And, and we're losing parking spaces. And he's adding on more building. And more he'll have employees. Thank you. We also have a uh, Jerome James. Good evening, Council, Mr. Mayor. I'm the owner of 1136 West Mason, and I just wanted to kind of uh, identify myself for the evening and also let um, us know that kind of this motion, I think, is more for the conditional use permit itself. 
the building permit is still under review for the site plan and I think these matters have more to do with the site review committee um, that's all thank you entertain a motion to close the floor Second. made by Alder from the 10th seconded by Alder from the 5th all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye, aye. all opposed nay the ayes have it and what are your wishes regarding item 2 we reconsidered motion made by Alder from the 1st seconded by from the 2nd seconded by Alder from the 1st to approve all, improve, all in favor of approving that item, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. And with regard to item three. Second. Motion to approve, made by Alder from the second, seconded by Alder from the first, to approve item three. Any further discussion? Alder from the eighth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it actually has to do more with the meeting as a whole. I'm wondering if uh, Director Ronick is going to be able to fix <laughs> The attachments I mean that that was a good example you know all of us look at the agendas coming up but when a specific one comes up you want to look at it right now we're all flying blind and so I don't know how much more we have coming up I don't know if director Ronick needed five ten minutes to fix this all right well I mean if it, if it doesn't affect us moving forward that's that's fine but if something comes up that we all need to view maybe we take a break right Thanks. That's all I have. Thanks. Okay. Any other speakers? Alder from the third. Thank you, Mayor. Basically, I, I can't pull it up for the computer. So, what is going there? Can someone just give us the gist? Who represents this area? I'd like to hear from the Alder. Director Bonk. Sure. Uh, this is for a limited uh, restaurant and, and pizza production facility. Um, the reason we're uh, looking at uh, amending this here is to allow for limited production. Uh, basically, if it's under 10,000 square feet of production and there's no negative impact on surrounding properties, right? No noise, smoke, odor, vibration, any of those types of things. So the production is very limited in scale. Um, and that is why we are recommending uh, this change in the, the CUP process. Thank you. Sure. I'm good, Mayor. Thank you, Alder. Seeing no other requests to speak, all in favor of the motion to approve item three, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The item has been approved. Under the report of the Park Committee, May 14th, 2019. Item. It's been a motion made to approve by Alder from the 8th. Second. Seconded by Alder from the 2nd to approve report Q, which is the report of the Park Committee from the meeting on May 14th, 2019. Um, just a note item four will be taken up after item U. Any other items under this report you wish to handle separately? <coughs> Alder from the 9th requests to be recorded as abstaining on item three. Item three. Yes. Very good. Alder from the 10th. Thank you, Your Honor. So if we cannot pull this item until later, correct? In terms of speakers and such? Yes. Okay. All right. That's all. Okay. Alder from the 11th. Apologies. I'm just going to pull number four. Just speak on number four. And they already pulled it, so that's fine. Thank okay. You. Very good. Thank you, Alder. Okay. Okay. All right. Hearing no other request uh, to handle items separately, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. Report of the Personnel Committee, May 14, 2019. What are your wishes regarding this report? Motion to approve made by Alder from the 1st, seconded by Alder from the 2nd to approve report R, which is the report of the Personnel Committee from meeting on May 14th, 2019. Any other items under this report you wish to handle separately? Three and four. 
will be handled separately. Hearing no others, all in favor of approving the re remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. The ayes have, and the report has been approved. Oh, abstain. I can't pull up one and two. Please. You're abstaining from the whole thing now? Alder from the third wishes to abstain on items one and two. On three and four. And what are your wishes regarding items three and four? Item three, separately. Motion made to approve by Alder from the first, seconded by Alder from the second. To approve, the item was pulled by Alder from the first. You have the floor. Thank you. So I have some things to say about this, but I would like to hear from the public first because I believe there are people out here that have been waiting to talk about this item. Um, this item is to approve as amended at committee the amendment of the City of Green Bay Personnel Policy Chapter 9, Hours of Work and Fringe Benefits, to include the policy regarding a volunteer time off program. So at this time, I'd like to make a motion to open the floor. Second. Motion made by Alder from the first, seconded by Alder from the fifth to open the floor. All in favor of signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. The floor is open. We have a Cora Haltofterheide who would like to speak. And please stay, state your address as well. Court, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Thank you. Um, first of all, I want to commend um, the personnel committee for coming forthright and believing in the community needs to upgrade itself and really put itself on the map. We talk about doing a lot of events. We talk about what a wonderful downtown we have. We talk about our bike paths. We're proud of it. I think it's time we realize that our employees, all organizations realize employees are an investment in your future. It takes two to three times more to train an employee once you lose one. Employees are an investment in every organization's future. The government needs to start thinking like that, in my mind, and as a taxpayer, I commend you for this, bringing this forward. I've also done some research, and there are two cities that currently, and I happen to have a friend in one of the towns, and I spoke to them, but it's really, and I would ask this committee to, to do some research on what happens to a town. Aur Mooresville, North Carolina, and also in Colorado, Aurora, Colorado. Do some research on what's happened to those government entities when they have offered volunteers to go out and their staff to go out. See what that does. We talk about bringing millennials into you know, living here. We want, to bring, we want to put studio apartments up. We want to give them bike paths. We want to give them concerts. What do we do need to value the, our employees here? I would bet that the HR person in this, in this organization, the city of Green Bay, is busy. Most HR people are because hiring and keeping employees, retention is a tough world out there. When I was, on, when I was 16, it was $1.50 an hour. Figure it out now. I think it's $12, $9 as a minimum wage. We need to retain our employees. Secondly, I happen to have a double purpose for being here. Volunteers are the backbone of my organization. I work for Habitat for Humanity. But I also know and I stand, I don't stand alongside of them, but I know many organizations that volunteers are the backbone of our organization. Last year we were fortunate to have 58,000 hours donated by volunteers. That's how we're able to do what we do. But I ask you to go look around the corners, look around the back streets, there's people that aren't eating. There's people that don't know how to speak English. There's mothers that are battered. Those are all run by nonprofits. Nonprofits exist by volunteer time. So again, I applaud this organization for taking the fortitude and the time and the commitment to think forward, to think forward and not go backwards. And again, 
that is that's my opinion. Thank you for your testimony. We also have uh, Katie Hess, 630 Brookridge Street. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to start off by going a little bit through the benefits of volunteering. Um, most of you probably are volunteers, have volunteered, so I'll make this brief. But most of you know that volunteering makes you happier. It decreases stress. It decreases anxiety. It gives you individual fulfillment. It helps you advance your career. It reduces the risk of depression. It also decreases obesity. And it also decreases the risk of disease. Corporate giving strategies are some things that companies do They've either started them already or they're in the process of developing them. And why do they do that? Because it helps their bottom line. More engaged employees make for more profits. Companies with highly engaged employees have three times the operating margin and four times the earnings per share of companies with low engagement. 64% of executives surveyed say that corporate citizenship produces tangible contribution to the company's bottom line. In the US, we spend $160 billion annually on employee training and education. And many leaders believe that these programs do not bring lasting change. By the way, if anybody wants the um, sources for any of this information, I can provide that to you. And yet the average employee turnover rate of all US industries averages 15.1%. It costs employers 33% of a worker's annual salary to hire a replacement if that worker leaves. The replacement cost is $15,000 per person for an employee earning a median salary of $45,000 a year. Employees most committed to their organization through volunteer programs put in 57% more effort on the job and are 87% less likely to resign. Teams with high employee engagement rates are 21% more productive and have 28% less internal theft. Organizations with highly engaged employees had an average three-year revenue growth 2.3 times greater than companies whose employees were only engaged at an average level. Over 50% of millennial employees that volunteer are very loyal toward their company, proud to work there, satisfied with their employer, and likely to recommend their company to a friend. Millennial employees who participate in a company's volunteer program are more than twice as likely to rate their work culture as very positive as compared to those who don't volunteer. 91% of Fortune 500 HR managers said that volunteering knowledge and expertise to a nonprofit can be an effective way to cultivate critical business and leadership skills, such as project management, communication, goal setting, and evaluation. These soft skills can make all the difference in cultivating leadership and planning for future success. Volunteering creates more engaged and fulfilled employees, which means businesses are more likely to retain their talent as well. At the federal level, the Fair Labor Standards Act doesn't mandate that companies pay their staffers for time not spent working, but they do, because the employees return better prepared to work. It took a long time for us to get to this point where we allow people time off, not working, because we understand the benefits of it. And taking a vacation is different than volunteering. They're not the same thing. And many of you know this. You volunteer for certain reasons. Vacations take you away, and volunteering embeds you in the community. Our city employees deserve the chance to be the best that they can be. Volunteer programs also help companies build trust with their customers, or in our case, the citizens of Green Bay, and respect the city's efforts to improve the community. And 40% of a company's reputation is determined by volunteering and corporate social responsibility. I love this city, and it deserves a great reputation. With that, I recommend the council defer this proposal to the personnel committee to further discuss details with those most appropriate. 
Thanks for your testimony. Next we have Dave Boyce from 123 South Quincy Street. Good evening. My name is Dave Boyce, 123 South Quincy, Green Bay. Um, I came here to deliberately allow myself to be influenced by the people that came to speak on this particular subject. Um, in a nutshell, I'm worried about the uh, potential for uh, uh, abuse insofar as um, uh, volunteering to um, uh, promote uh, political candidates. Uh, I would like to see if there could be a specific exclusion so that uh, uh, they wouldn't just simply send out a lot of people to support the 2020 election or something like that. I'd like to see some real bona fide uh, uh, situations in which there's the one-to-one -one that this uh, community so desperately needs. You know, everybody's in their own little little uh, pocket in the, the pool table of life, you know. So uh, uh, if it can be done in such a way that we could guarantee that uh, uh, there wouldn't be that kind of abuse, you know, I, I would uh, support that. Thank you. Very good. Thanks for your testimony. Next, we have uh, Bronson Smith, 1525 Smith Street. <coughs> Bronson Smith, 1525 Smith Street, Green Bay. Volunteering is generally considered an altruistic activity where the individual or group provides services for no financial or social gain to benefit another person, group, or, or organization. The mayor and a group of aldermen and others want all city employees to have the ability to volunteer, quote unquote, up to three days each year while receiving full pay for their volunteered hours. The city employees that are pushing this call it a benefit to the city employees at large. But where is the benefit to the tax paying city residents that are not asked to volunteer their tax dollars on an annual basis? No, they are forced by law to pay these taxes. They are required that that are required to fund this fund, to fund fund the fund the city and pay these many individual salaries. Simple math shows us that if all city employees take part in this propo proposed program, that gives us a, gives us approximately twelve thousand accumulative hours multiplied by, let's say, a, a lowballed a wage of fifteen fifteen dollars an hour, you get approximately one hundred eighty thousand dollars. Of tax dollars being paid out to employees that are volunteering at some nonprofit and not working for the city residents, but the real number is likely well over two hundred thousand dollars, since salaries are probably well over fifteen bucks an hour. If city if if city employees want to volunteer, I applaud them. That's awesome. But volunteering should be on their own time and on their own dime, not the Green Bay taxpayers' time. Nor should the Green Bay taxpayers be forced to fund this fake. Vol, vol, fake, vol, 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 volunteerism. I'm sorry. Uh, that warm, fuzzy feeling that true volunteers get for helping out worthy organizations should not be paid for by the overtaxed residents of Green Bay. I have a better idea and a much better way to use those 12,000 potential hours and 180,000 ish tax dollars. Give those employees that don't have enough work orange vests, a shovel, and have them fill potholes with warm asphalt. Basically, every road in Green Bay has countless potholes, and the taxpayers' cars are being damaged by driving over these potholes, costing taxpayers hundreds of dollars in repairs. In closing, this is a massive, irresponsible waste of local tax dollars. Maybe the city needs to tax the people of Green Bay $200,000-ish a year less, since many in Green Bay think we have extra funds laying around to pay city employees do not do the jobs they were hired for. This, I say no in all caps to this proposal. Thank you. And thanks for your testimony. And finally, we have Tony Erbar. Hi, I'm flip flops. I can write from work. <laughs> no disrespect. Um, just um, as I was listening to that last um, um, opinion, um, I did the math in my head, and if we have 100,000 people in Green Bay, and it's $180,000, that's $2 a person. I just think we can afford to pay $2 to help some of these amazing nonprofits that came here to talk in front of you. 
Um, so my name is Tony Airbar. Uh, I own American Tent and Sidewall, which is over on 929 Cedar Street. Um, I'm 100% in support of this. Uh, and if and when you guys pass this, I will institute it at my company as well for all 30 of my employees. So whatever you agree to do, I'll do it myself. Um, but I ask you to refer to committee. Um, I had a conversation with Alder Johnson today, with Alder Dorf. Um, and uh, after hearing um, that, that maybe this isn't a fully baked plan at this point, and we haven't heard from all parties, I, it, it, I think it's important that everyone, not everyone, because you can't bring all 100,000 people to the table, but um, enough people are brought to the table, the important people, um, to talk about how to implement this important issue. Um, so on the surface, this is an amazing opportunity. Uh, it allows city's employees to engage on something they are passionate about, all for the betterment of the city. And my definition, and everyone is allowed their own definition of what local government should do, is to provide basic services, safety, and bettering our community. And I think this proposal would check box number three in spades. Additionally, as a business owner, I fully appreciate the effect that a program like this can have on an enriching culture, more morale, and engagement of employees. For those who are familiar with Bob Chapman, he's the CEO and owner of Barry Waymiller, which owns PCMC here in town. Uh, he wrote a book, it's called Everyone Matters. It's one of my favorite books. And he argues that given the fact that employees spend 40 plus hours per week at work, we as employers have the biggest impact on the happiness, livelihood, and conversely stress that employees feel. There is no surprise that heart attacks raise a good percent on Monday morning. And I'm sure if the firefighters were here, they would validate that for me. Um, uh, so I would argue that the city as an employer, uh, and, like every other employer, and that this program um, would do just that. It would engage, energize, and enrich the lives of their employees. Um, and I see that was clearly the intent. However, if you can't vote yes today, I strongly urge you to refer, as I think additional discussion must occur, to ensure all voices are heard, evaluated, and that consensus can be reached. Thank you for the time. Thanks for your testimony. And that is the last slip we have on that item. The motion made to close the floor by Alder from the 10th, seconded by Alder from the 7th. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The floor is closed. Alder from the 1st. Thank you, Mayor. So I have a few things that I'd like to say. First, I want to reflect on um, Cora brought uh, he commended the personnel department, um, talking about our employees are an investment in our future. And Katie, um, talking about decreasing stress, reducing the risk of depression, um, this sort of volunteering embeds you in the community. I love that phrase, I wrote that down. Um, Mr. Boyce, um, I agree with you. There should be some restrictions in this, definitely. Um, that's one of the things I was thinking about. And uh, Tony, um, bettering our community, engaging, energizing, and enriching. So when I first heard about this policy, I, I was very, very supportive of it. Um, I thought, what a wonderful thing to give back to our community because our employees serving our community, learning right on the, on the ground, hand in hand, arm in arm building a home for Habitat. Uh, that's a lot of work, by the way. I, I've been involved. Yeah, it's, n it's not a vacation day. Um, so I, I was very excited about this policy. I do not want to vote about on this policy tonight because since that time, um, I have gotten more negative calls than on anything up to and including the wheel tax from people. I think because there is not a deep understanding of what the intent is, I think there are some changes that we could make in the policy to make our community feel more accepting of this policy. I've got ideas that I've been writing down, I've been talking to people. So at this time, what I would like to do is, is make a motion to refer this back to um, the personnel committee and staff to work on it, to rework the policy, and, and to do more thinking about this policy. Second. Seconded by Alder from the 7th. Motion made by Alder from the 1st to refer back to committee. Uh, seconded by Alder from the 7th. 
Um, we have a few additional speakers here. Um, Alder from the 10th. Oh, am I still on? Oh, okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as far as referral, I agree with that right now. Uh, I had a chance to talk with the mayor and with uh, Director Falls, Joe, several times. And at first blush, there are some good things with this. But the big pushback that I got from citizens, I sent out maybe 30 emails to different citizens in my district. 14 voted for it, 12 didn't. So it was about 50-50. But I did have a negative pushback on that as well. And I think the big thing is the fact that you know, we are a public entity, or as opposed to private, and I think the fact is, is that, you know, a lot of folks look at it that, you know, it's hard to separate that out. You know, we are, you know, taxes are being paid, but I think, I think there are more things that we need to talk about with this policy. So um, I, I do go for a referral, and uh, that's all I have. Thank you, Alder. Just to note that the attachments should be working for right. council. Oh, Maybe just. Give that a shot. Uh, Alder from the 7th. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll also support referral. Uh, I think uh, talking with many uh, in the community uh, and uh, doing an interview even, uh, I think there is some misunderstanding and confusion out there. This is kind of a unique uh, benefit, and I think uh, if we could rebrand it and uh, get out some better information on it, I think we'd be doing ourselves and our community a service. I would just like to add that we, the purpose of this benefit is to attract and retain youthful workers, millennials. So I would caution us, I, there might be some tweaks we can do, but let's keep in mind what is being done out there, and we don't want to tweak this to where it is no longer effective, uh, then we haven't accomplished anything. The, the purpose of the benefit is to attract and retain uh, millennials. So let's keep that in mind. Uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, next uh, month we can come back and we can rock and roll with it. So thank you. Thank you, Alder. Alder from the ninth. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to try to speak to the referral specifically rather than on the policy itself. And specifically, I want to call out a few things that I hope that the committee does consider. And I, I will support referral, uh, but again, I, I would hope that the committee would consider these things. And so the first thing that I would point out is I, I feel like we've we failed to lay out an argument about what problem it is we're trying to fix. And so I think a lot of things have been tossed out that suggest that this helps employee morale, um, it might help us attract more qualified candidates, but what I would like to understand more accurately is the culture within City Hall, uh, you know, at a, at a level right now that we need some improvement, um, and are we having difficulty tracking, uh, recruiting talent? Um, and, and I'm not exactly sure how you would articulate that, but I think it's a strong argument that needs to be made. Um, I would follow that up with, um, it seems to me then that we're potentially only offering one solution of a, of a bigger problem. And so I would like to see the committee explore if those in fact are the problems that we're trying to solve, what other, what other alternative solutions do we have that can address that? And I think personally I would favor a more widespread assessment that helps us understand, again, what that problem is that we're trying to fix. I feel like, I mean, data decisions will, will help more promote more transparency for the public, which I feel is going to be uh, something that is really critical to promote here because government is not the same as the private sector. I understand the private sector is doing this, but we are not the same and we have a different standard and litmus test that we need to meet. Um, some of the things that I would say that I'm not as concerned about and that is the technical definitions of what volunteering are. I'm not as concerned about uh, abuse of the program. Our city staff are adults. We need to treat them that way. If we treat them any other way, then I expect I, I would expect childish behavior in return. And so, if we can't treat our staff as adults and that we trust them um, to to adhere to this program as we do uh, their daily activities, I, I think we're in the wrong uh, direction there. But ultimately, we need to get to the heart of how does this benefit the taxpayer, and that really hasn't been talked about. I think it's implied: happier employees create a better workplace. But how can we better articulate that? Um, and the last thing that I would point out is I feel like. Um, there's been some discussion about how there's not a cost to this program. This is the easiest way for us to add a benefit that doesn't cost something. And while I understand that there's not a fiscal impact for this program, there is a cost, and it's an opportunity cost, um, which is basically, you know, how money or other benefits are lost when pursuing a particular course of action instead of a mutually exclusive alternative. 
So essentially what this boils down to is, is really a discussion about is this the way that we want to redistribute our resources? And I think that is the more appropriate discussion on this topic. Council reserves that right to say, yeah, I mean, 180,000 was thrown out. I'm sure, you know, I don't know what that exact number is, but that to me is at the heart of this discussion. Not only the redistribution of resources and can we get a better return on that investment by having happier employees. So again, I would encourage the committee to really evaluate those things before you bring it back here. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder from the 12th. Yes, thank you, Mayor. All, all great points um, from Alderman Johnson. I agree with many, if not all of them. I guess I have one quick question for Director Faults. Uh, I, I understand that this item is currently for non-represented employees. So at some point, I, I assume represented employees are union employees. At some point, is there, is there, was there any conversation or thought to the fact that as union contracts come due and bargaining begins that these employees are also going to want this benefit or expect it? Director Fault. Yeah, there's been thought about that. And this is um, the represented employees that are excluded in this policy would be police, fire, and transit. We do have some representative employees in DPW and parks. They are not included um, to be ex excluded. And yes, there has been thought about that a um, bargaining unit may want to bargain this into their contract and that has been thought about how we would negotiate back and forth and, and that really gets down to what they're going to negotiate for what we're going to give up or excuse me what they would give up to get this policy so yes that has been explored thank you so right off the bat you know we we are segregating employees half are entitled to this benefit and the other half potentially in the future and it's going to really open the, the city up to some weak standing when we when we negotiate and bargain these types of things. Uh, the other thought that I had was currently 500 employees at 24 hours per employee. That's 12,000 hours of labor to, that, that the city will be giving up for volunteering. And although very, very nice to think of our employees volunteering in the community, we are basically uh, giving up 12,000 hours of our staff labor that quite frankly is very very much needed within the city you know, we've been uh, many of us went through the last budget and we know that our resources are very thin right now you know the, the staff hours are thin we had to cut I believe 14 police officers so I don't think we are in any position to give up basically six full-time employees worth of labor and, and transferred those duties or transferred the volunteer hours, if you will, to nonprofit or any other community organization as much as, as that's a nice thought. So I think the, the thought is well and the intent is you know, okay. It's just that the amount of feedback I'm getting from constitu constituents is very much overwhelmingly against to the point that I, I don't recommend referral. I, I think we just need to kind of scrap the whole thing and repackage it and have the administration come forward with a new idea that that really takes into account some of the things that each alder has been hearing from the public uh, the, the last thought I have uh, the the term that we're trying to attract Millennials I'll be honest that that makes me uneasy because it it makes it seem like we're only trying to attract that certain group or that group in order to work for the city that we gotta think outside the box. I would say that there are a lot of employees throughout the community that do not fit in the box of being a millennial. And if I if I hear that, if I'm one of those, if, in fact, I don't think I'm a millennial technically. So I, I don't like the thought that that we're gearing all of our city, you know, not all, but much of our city, you know, HR push towards attracting millennials. We have a lot of employees who work for the city that are not millennials. So that just makes me a little uneasy. So I'm against referral. I'm not against, you know, repackaging and reframing this, but I, I just think that there's so much that, that needs to be worked out on this. And I don't think referring back as is, this is the appropriate thing. I think uh, Mayor Gendrich, if you could, for me, you know, look at this a little more closely and get more community feedback before you move forward. So I'm against referral. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder from the 7th. Thank you, Honor. I'd just like to bring up uh, a few points. I know this is going to committee, so I don't want to talk about this too much, but I, there were a few points I think should be brought up. Uh, this is part of an ongoing 
process for the city. The city has been losing workers. That was a history that we've dealt with for the past decade here or so. Uh, and uh, we, a few years ago, we had Detman do a, a, a survey, a, I mean a uh, study, and they came back with, uh, uh, we need to up our salaries. And so uh, we adopted that, and that was one step for uh, retaining employees and encouraging uh, the hiring of more newer employees. So this is now just the next step is what can we do with a benefits package? And with, when you look at benefits packages uh, or what we can do to help, there isn't much that is going to be uh, budget neutral. I mean, there are, uh, I would love to be able to offer a program where we uh, help student tap down student debt, which many companies are doing. We can't do that. We can't, we've got no money for that. Uh, the only benefits we have that are budget neutral are um, uh, sick days, personal days, vacation days. And those are all paid days. And those are days that are covered. Uh, you could say, you could add up those hours and say those are lost hours. And I disagree. There is no effect for the taxpayer because staff works their schedule so that services are still provided. And I think this is just one more thing where services will still be provided. There is no cost effect to the taxpayer. So uh, uh, this is an ongoing thing of what we can do. Uh, this has been something we've been dealing with uh, as a council for a while. Uh, how, how we can retain the employees we have, how we can attract new employees. And your workforce generally as you, I mean, we're aging. <laughs> The, the, the people that are, we're going to be hiring, in all practical purposes, are going to be younger people. That's, that's a demographic. That's the way things are working out. So that's what we have to look at, and that's what we have to prepare for. And uh, uh, I know this is uh, a benefit that I never heard of before. I think it's rather innovative, but uh, it seems to be working in some municipalities and in business. So I think it's definitely worth uh, uh, us to look at. And I don't think that we uh, need to do a lot of tweaking. I think we need to do a lot of getting the information out there of just where this is coming from and what it is we're doing and how we're doing it. Uh, I think uh, kudos to Joe and everybody that worked on this. I think uh, the policy itself is, is pretty well, pretty airtight. You know, like I said, we might want to do a little tweaking about what uh, uh, nonprofits might be out of bounds or whatever. We can look at that. Uh, but in general, uh, I, I think we got a good program here. I think uh, this is something that current employees would also value. Uh, I think the estimate was uh, looking at business in other municipalities, uh, you get like 25% participation. So, uh, and it's, I would just also like to add the reason fire and transit and those others are not included now is they already are under contract. We can include them, we, they have their contract. And so it's up to them to decide if they want to uh, be a part of this or not. But we could not include them now if we wanted to. They're under contract. So I uh, just want to uh, uh, clear the air a little bit on a few things. And uh, I don't want to go, like I said, go too much into this because it is going to, I think, I support going back. Uh, and uh, there will be more discussion there. So uh, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alder. Alder from the fourth. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I approve this at the committee level, and, and I applaud uh, the nonprofits. Uh, if we were to take away everything that they have provided this community, it would be a shell of itself, and, and we would be much worse off for it. Um, and, and I like the idea of this, but at the same time, I have had a lot of blowback. I have had zero calls or comments or anything from anyone that's, that's in favor of this, zero. Uh, and usually I get a, at least a mix, but I've had nothing. Um, I've had people tell me that they volunteer for their offices, but they volunteer for free, no pay. They and their staff go to a function all day long, and whatever they're volunteering at, they're not getting paid. And so they wonder why we're paying employees. But I, I agree with uh, Alder Johnson. Are there other alternative programs out there besides this that we could be looking at um, as part of a benefits package? And that's what this is. We've had a lot of good employees leave, a lot. And uh, the, the, the police department I know, for one, is having a tough time recruiting. Would something or something like this be something that would attract them? I don't know, and that's why I would hope that staff would 
have some alternatives available for us, uh, that they would have some statistics on how difficult it has been to attract employees and what kind of employees. I mean, is it just police or is it across the board? Uh, we want people to come and live in Green Bay. We want them to be here. We want them to put down roots. We want their children to stay here. We want this to be a growing community, and that has not been happening at a very good rate. It's been really, really low, less than 1%, I believe. And if we're going to attract people here, we have to have things in place to do that. And if, and if this is one of them, I think it deserves to be looked at and looked at in depth. And Mr. Airbar, I, I applaud you. That is, that's a huge commitment uh, for a private sector company to, to commit that amount of time of your employees. Um, and whether this goes through or not, I kind of hope you, you still do it, but that's up to you. Um, but, I mean, Cora, Cora may just go bend your arm a little bit to, to get you to go through with that. But regardless, I, I think there's a lot of ground that needs to be plowed and, and worked over yet for, for this to be able to come back to council. And I'm, I'm in favor of, of referral. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Alder from the second. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm going to keep this short. Um, I supported this when I first heard about it. Um, I realize that it's a fairly new benefit, whether you're talking about um, private or public. Um, I do support it going back to count, uh, committee. Some of the um, people that did reach out did have concerns regarding um, the fact there, were, there weren't, weren't really any restrictions on um, places that uh, could be volunteered. Um, workers could volunteer at. So, um, yep, I absolutely support it going back to committee and um, working on this a little bit more. Thank you, Alder. <clears throat> Seeing no other requests to speak. Oh, apologies. Uh, Alder from the 11th. Thank you, Mayor. In my district, uh, I had mainly feedback of they didn't support it. And uh, I think some of the comments were that volunteering is volunteering they don't get paid and that was the main the main thrust of all the people that called me some people you know got on the phone kind of hot about it as far as you know they, they thought it was you know just not the right thing to do and they were just trying to redefine volunteering and, and they resented it I think uh, that, that was the feedback I got from the, the people in my district that called me and other people as well uh, throughout the city so I can't support it at this time uh, that's my comments. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any other additional comments? Alder from the third. Just question, Mayor. Do you see my light on? No. It's not? Okay. It, I do well, have an eye. Actually, it just came on, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm against referral. I am not going to be turned into a used car salesman and sugarcoat this. This is not the way to attract new individuals to our city. Maybe we should be looking at other issues like crime, public housing, that's bringing in problems to our city. And that's a fact. Back in the 90s when I applied to be a policeman, we had thousands that would apply for Green Bay, which probably over 1,000 people, maybe 1,500, and they were hiring two or three. Now, what do we have? 100 people applying, 120 for six or seven jobs. Times have changed. You gotta look at the media. The media is not helping society, not at all. All they do, basically, the majority of their reporting is bad news. It's a shame, but that's a different subject. We can't do much about the media, can we? <coughs> Scandal states that all we have to do is tweak it. Let's tweak it tonight. Let's vote on it tonight. I guess what are you scared of? I'm not. I'm ready to vote. But I'm not going to try to sugarcoat this. I don't think that's right. I think it's dishonest. Maybe we should basically scratch it and start over. There has been a pushback, huge, and that's why we want to refer it back. And we have people from the audience, that I, don't, I don't know how they were invited, but they got some connection here. 
when we're at first name basis. I don't believe in this. I think we should be looking at other things to help our city. What can we do to bring officers, more applicants to our community? Maybe look at our inner city. What's causing the problems? You look at the engineering department years ago, we gave them a pay raise. We still can't keep them. I had an argument with one of the, uh, the um, aldermans back in the day who was on personnel. <coughs> that if we give pay raises to our engineers, we're gonna keep them. Oh, we can't, so that doesn't work. Do you think this is gonna work, three days? Let's do it right then. Let's give them a month off with pay to volunteer if we really wanna turn this city around. According to the information I've received tonight, Mayor, but I don't think this works. I'm not gonna support it. <coughs> Let's vote on it now. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Motion on the floor is a referral to committee. If there are no other requests to speak here. All in favor uh, will signify by saying aye or vote aye. Opposed will vote no. Um, use the board. Referral. Eight ayes, four noes. The motion is successful and the item has been referred to committee. And what are your wishes regarding item four? All from the 11th. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I guess my concern is uh, the closing on Friday that there will be nobody in the offices on Friday afternoon. Uh, I think if we're looking at you know, reducing down the number of staff. We couldn't have one person in, in, the, in the offices to take up the issues that might be coming forward, the business of the city. I, I think that's my main concern there, that we're gonna be shutting down. I, I think the city and the county, uh, they, they do a lot of things hand in hand. People do their business, you know, Monday through Friday, basically eight to 4.30. That's my main concern that, you know, we will be shut down in. In other words, that, is that right across the board as far as the Department of Public Works? They'll be off as well. All the trucks won't be moving. Is that correct? Alder Grenier. All right, <laughs> Director Grenier, sorry. Uh, to the extent that we can model what's happening at City Hall with our remote locations, we will do that. Uh, but with Public Works, we do have on-call. Uh, we do have custodian coverage, uh, which is our on-call answering service as well so any problems that arise we do have the ability to dispatch and take care of that that currently happens nights and weekends so this would be no different just my questions thank you okay. thank you alder alder from the first thank you mayor um i just i wanted to speak in favor of this policy uh it's something that i experienced when i worked for the school district we went to this summer schedule and had some concerns uh, similar to what um, Ald Alder Vanderleest had just mentioned, and uh, as, it, as it turns out, <coughs> Green Bay gets pretty dead on Friday afternoons and Saturdays. I mean, I've lived here a long time, and um, I, I think expanding the hours is a fabulous idea, going 7.30 to 5. I believe that's, that's correct um, during the week. Um, we need to just really publicize this, you know, put the hours out everywhere, but I think it gives people an opportunity to get in and to do their business, and I think there's just not a lot that happens on Friday afternoons and I did talk to some members of city staff and I was that was affirmed um, that they said yeah it's was it's pretty slow Friday <coughs> afternoon so I like I like what this is doing thank you thank you Alder Alder from the 12th yes thank you mayor um, I agree with Alder Dorf I'm I'm in favor of this um, Let's be honest, we get very limited amounts of good weather in Green Bay. That might be a reason why we can't attract workers, I don't know. But, <laughs> but in summer months, for the benefit to families to be able to get outside and enjoy you know, the, the, the long weekend, I think that that is a great benefit to provide our employees. And I also agree with Alder Dorf that we have to publicize this, and I think we all know that. If we put a public relations 
blitz out there, if you will, and let people know, then we could really, you know, a, a year or two of this, I think by then the public will really get to know. And then if some people show up at City Hall and we're not open, then we can use that as a, use. we can then explain it to them at that time. So I'm definitely in favor of this. And thank you for everyone who brought this forward. I think it's a great idea. Thank Thanks, Alder. Alder from the 9th. Thank you, Mayor. Just a question for Director Faulds. Um, for staff that we have that may not want to take advantage of this policy, um, maybe it's problematic for them to come in earlier or stay later on those other four days of the week, can we make accommodations for them to maintain their regular work schedule? Director Fultz. Yeah, we can accommodate them the best we can. Um, I think they'll have to talk to their supervisor and work with their coworkers to make sure we have coverage for the summer hours. Uh, when it comes to Friday afternoons, uh, we do want for uh, safety and security reasons to close at 1130. We also want to make sure that our hourly employees are complying with the wage and hour laws, that they're not putting overtime that could increase costs to the city. But they can receive approval from department heads and HR to work later on Fridays, Fridays if they want to make up the time. But yes, we can accommodate employees. They can talk to supervisors and the department heads to accommodate their schedule. Thank you, Alder. So the motion on the floor is to approve Item four, if there are no uh, other requests to speak. So seeing no further requests, all in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. The ayes have it, the item is approved. On to S, report of the Sustainability Commission. Thank you. Approve. May 8th, 2019. Motion to approve, made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the first. To approve uh, report S, which is the report of the Sustainability Commission from the meeting on May 8th, 2019. Any other items? It's the only item. Yeah. No. Alder from the 11th. Uh, I was just wondering, is it, is it legal to ban the product that they're talking about here on uh, the sustainability committee? In other words, I think the, the city of Green Bay uses tar and uh, bituminous type material. Is that Alder. what they're referring to here? Alder from, Alder from the 7th. It, it, it's a pretty nasty tar, it, uh, uh, and it's, um, we didn't, uh, at the com at commission, we weren't aware of uh, who was using this in the area. Uh, we just had noted that uh, there were many municipalities in Wisconsin that are banning it. Uh, it's a pretty nasty business. Um, so we thought uh, there are other, there's asphalt that can be used, and there's another, uh, I think it's a, I don't know if they call it tar. There's another. There are other products that can be used. Uh, one of them is actually a little more expensive, but lasts longer. And asphalt is actually cheaper. So uh, there are products that uh, we can urge people to use to be more environmentally ask, safe. Uh, Director Grenier, do we use this product that he's talking about right now? Director Grenier, we we are not using coal tar based. Uh, what Alder Scannell is referring to is either asphalt-based or acrylic-based, uh, silicone-based sealants. And the sealants that we're using are probably in the 70% asphalt and 25% polymer. Uh, so it's, it's a modified polymer asphalt mix, and the polymer is typically a silicone. Uh, so it's a rubberized asphalt mix. This won't have impact how DPW conducts our business at all. For our staff and what we do know, I think this may have a bigger impact on other people within the community if there are seal coders who come in and do private parking lots, for instance, and they're using a coal tar based sealant, it would impact them. So, you know, folks who are having their driveways seal coated or parking lots or things of that nature, this type of ban would stop those applications within the city but as far as what DPW is doing it won't impact us at all my question Alder from the seventh yep yes uh, and this was brought up at the Commission that uh, this would affect mostly private businesses and sorry <laughs> time to take a pill <laughs> uh, uh, but that um, private businesses 
usually work a broader area and so that if they have because uh, uh, we had discussed about putting uh, creating a sunset area for businesses to unload this material and we thought well if they need to do that they can do that in other communities this is very nasty uh, stuff and that they can use uh, more environmentally protective uh, sealants within our city so uh, this does affect private business but I don't think it affects them too detrimentally uh, because there are other communities where they will not have this ban and they can use that product. And hopefully when uh, we will be encouraging more and more of the private industry to get more and more uh, environmentally on board because uh, what they do affects uh, our city and uh, it's not good, this stuff. So uh, that's why we went with this. Thank you. Seeing no additional speakers. All in favor of the report will signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed nay? No. The ayes have it. On to receive and place on file. Motion to receive and place Second. on file. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 3rd to receive and place on file the municipal court report for April 2019. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed nay? The ayes have it. The report has been received and placed on file. Uh, the report of the Finance Committee, item 6, will be taken up as a part of the Committee of the Whole. What are your wishes Motion regarding this report? Second. Motion made by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 1st, to approve Report U, which is the report of the Finance Committee from the meeting on May 8th, 2019. Any uh, additional items under this report you wish to handle separately? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and the report has been approved. Item, we are back to item four from the Park Committee, May 14, 2019. What are your wishes regarding this item? Motion to approve. Motion made by Alder from the 7th. Second. Seconded by Alder from the 8th to approve. Okay. Alder from the 12th. Thank you, Mayor. If I if I could, I, I believe that this item we could go into closed session for, but item nine, the one that I uh, sent to the protection and policy, is an item that is not up for closed session. So I'm curious if we can move item nine up before this item, and then do all the closed sessions together. <coughs> Does that Attorney, make sense? Yeah. Attorney Chavez? Uh, it's up to you all and how you want to take it, but those three items are, are linked, um, and the, all the ones pertaining to the, the tribe. And so if the discussions in closed session will affect the decision um, on that item from PMP, then the recommendation would be to hold it until after you come out of closed session. Hold it from the 12th. Um. I don't know. I mean, I think that this item was noticed for discussion in open session, so I would feel comfortable as the person who brought it forward to, although they're related, um, what I'm proposing doesn't necessarily need to be discussed in closed session. So I, I would prefer to have this in open, right now, be prior to going into closed session for the other three items, I believe. Chavez. It is up to this council and what you want to dis whether you want to discuss this in open session. The only thing I will say is that it could potentially go to the negotiations um, that that are are brought up in the in the other ones. I think if if it's the wish if the council agrees, I'd like to take item nine of protection policy now. I'll make a motion to that effect, and then if we start talking of things that really should be discussed in closed session, and I can't imagine that we would, then perhaps Attorney Chavez could let us know and we'll, we'll save those conversations. Motion has been made um, to take up item 9, seconded by, or motions have been made by Alder from the 12th, seconded by Alder from the 10th to take up item 9 at this time. 
Alder from the 7th. Yeah, I would rather we took it up after. I want to do, do this in open session too, but the discussions in closed session, I think, relate to this item and will help us discuss this item afterward. Because depending upon some of the things we, what action we might take, will directly relate to this. Uh, and it would be good to know what action we're going to be taking as a council before we discuss this. It'd make it much easier for me to discuss it. Uh, if I know what action we're doing first uh, in closed session. So I would rather we did it after if we, don't, if we could make the motion for that. Or amend your motion, if you wouldn't mind. Alder from the 12th. Yeah, the, the issue that I'm running into is, quite frankly, a timing issue. Because as, as we're getting notices of, of what we're getting notices on, the, the more that we discuss this in closed session, and the more um, people who live in these areas are not aware of the situation, then I'm getting increasingly uneasy. So I, I, prefer, I, I get what you're saying, Alder Scannell. I just think that there's a statement that I would like to read in open session. Uh, I would like to know what our options are, and then we can go from there. I, I don't think I'm going to say anything that's going to jeopardize anything that I haven't already stated publicly. Um, I've been rather consistent on this, the need for the public to be informed, because when the public is informed, then good policy can, can, can begin. So if I could, and I, all due respect to you, I would like to keep this agenda item before the closed sessions. I'd like to read a statement and then open the floor if anyone wants to speak. And then um, I think what I'm proposing is rather modest and pretty straightforward and rather reasonable so for those reasons i'd like to have this discussion in open session before the closed session items alder from the first thank you mayor um i'd like to agree with alder scannell because my light had been on actually to say I, I agree we should do this in open session and i'd really like to wait until after the closed session to do it so that is the way that i would be voting because I, I don't want to do it right now. I want to wait till after. But it definitely can be done in open session. Thank you. Alder from the 6th. Yes, I have uh, some people here who want to speak on item 4. And they've been sitting here all evening, waiting and waiting. And actually some already left. Because, yeah, it's getting late. <laughs> so sure. that's, I'm going to vote no. I would like number 4 brought up first. If we could. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Few lights on any additional yep. comments alder from the seventh uh i would just say that if if uh, the the alder from uh, uh district 12 would like to make a you know uh, read a statement and so on i have no problem with that if if, if uh after a closed session uh i feel a need or anyone feels a need to discuss it we can always reconsider and bring it up so i'm fine if if you if you're more comfortable with doing that before uh, that's fine i'm i'm fine with that Thank you. Alder from the 12th. Yeah, just simply, again, uh, we're in a position where a year into this, and I agree with you, Mayor, that we need to turn a page with our relationship with the, the Oneida Nation. I've been saying that from the very beginning of my term, even while campaigning. So in an effort to turn this corner, I, I do feel it necessary to just read something. It's nothing, you know, terribly official but it's just my personal feelings that I would like to if you could I mean I don't know if we have to make a motion to move this item or if I could just state this before we go into closed session make a statement forward with your statement alder okay right now okay so i was going to share this at the protection and policy committee but uh, we had a good discussion otherwise so uh, i'll begin by stating stating that each alder person faces important issues within their districts which can present challenges it isn't always easy to decide the best course of action or how to move forward 
And given we are public officials, our actions, words, and decisions are rightfully open to criticism. So my agenda item comes before you after nearly a year of contemplating the best time and most appropriate manner to carry forth with this discussion in my, my desire to do so in open session in front of those by whom we have been elected to serve. I have now entered my eighth year in public office with four years on the Brown County Board and three years on the City Council behind me. Through all those years and even more so today, I have prided myself on being a fair, reasonable, and hardworking servant to and representative of all people. During all of my seven plus years in public office, I have treated all with dignity and respect and I don't shy away from uncomfortable conversations on matters of public interest. In fact, I've stressed the need for open and transparent government and believe the more awareness the public has of an important issue, the more likely we are to, to continue to and build a strong, inclusive community, one in which we all can be a proud to call home. That, after all, is one of the core reasons and purposes of government. However, on the issue of tax-exempt federal trust properties, the public has questions we must answer. I carry a extremely high level of respect and appreciation toward the Oneida Nation, their representatives, and tribal members. Their positive impact on our community and the ways they contribute to our culture and economy are both tremendous and undeniable. I sincerely believe this agenda item is a necessary and vital step toward clearing up some of the confusion my constituents have conveyed to me during the months of the 2018 City Council campaign, as well as during nearly every single month that has followed. Furthermore, I think this agenda item is an even greater step toward initiating discussions of a shared service or intergovernmental agreement between the City of Green Bay and the Oneida Nation, and will allow public input into the process. It is vital that the City of Green Bay and the Oneida Nation work together, and it is my wish that we restart a community conversation and work towards a solution. And above all, I want to convey that this agenda item has been brought for forward from a position of optimism and hope. It is my sincere belief that when the public is fully engaged in this process and when the City of Green Bay and the Oneida Nation collaborate on answering questions and communicating joint goals, the residents on the far west side, all residents, are going to reap the benefits of an incredible partnership. That's all. Thank you for listening. I needed to state that publicly. Thank you, Alder. Uh, I think now we'd entertain a motion to open the floor. Open. Motion made by Alder from the 10th, second by Alder from the 7th to open the floor. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The floor is open. On this agenda item? or I, I don't know if anyone's speaking, but. Oh, I thought you'd mention No, I, if someone was Mayor. interested. Mayor. Number four, we'd like to do. Yeah. Um, we do have Tom Sladek. Listed. I uh, intended to speak to item U6. Okay, would, you, would you prefer that I speak now? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> sure. Attorney Chavez. <laughs> To clarify what we are doing, um, because there is closed session language for the Park Committee item four, as well as V1 and U6, those items are all going to be taken up at the same time. So you guys can hear everybody speak at the same time. Just so we go into closed session, you will take all the items up separately when you come back out into open session. Well, you want me to go ahead now? Go ahead, sir. Thank you. I'm Tom Sladek, 2634 Sequoia Lane, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Hi, Council. <laughs> A lot of familiar faces here. Um, I'd like to share with you um, a number of points uh, related to item U6 and the item for the uh, Council as a whole. Um, first, I'd like to start with a concept to share with you. And this is a concept that I believe in and that I have found in 
over six years of representing the far west side that the people in the neighborhoods believe in. And that concept is that all parcels in a neighborhood should be subject to the same ordinances, enforced by the same government, and that being a government in which everybody has a voice. And I want to point out that when parcels go into federal trust, that doesn't happen. Now you've got some parcels that are not under the authority of a government in which everybody has a voice. I had a lot of experience and contacts from people in the, the affected neighborhoods trying to understand why the property down the block or the property across the street wasn't being held accountable to the same rules that their property was. And, and they weren't. Some of you remember I brought a lot of examples to the council. Um, it, under the service agreement, it just was not working. And um, it creates uncertainty. So I had, I had a call from one constituent who, um, who was thinking about adding a sunroom or, th or four seasons room on the back of her house. She wanted to know what the tribe could do with the property behind her house, which was in trust. And I told her, I can't answer that because it's out of the city's reach. Her response was, I'm not going to invest into this house if I don't know what's going to happen on the neighboring property. So uncertainty hurts property values. It keeps people from purchasing or keeps people from improving or maintaining or investing in their houses. So my message to you is you need to not weaken the city's resolve to resist properties going into federal trust. And I'm concerned that if you step into a negotiation, you might do just that. Um, just a couple of other quick points. One is, is an offer. I, I would be perfectly willing um, to sit down with any one of you and spend whatever time you care to take to share with you my experiences and learning about this matter. Just call and we'll set up a time. However much time you want, I'll be happy to offer it. I'll tell you everything I learned and everything I experienced. And my last point is I want to challenge the need for you to go into closed session on this. You've all been talking about closed session a lot as if it's a foregone conclusion. But you still have a decision to make here. And I don't think you need to go into closed session, at least unless you did something in a previous closed session that I don't know about. I don't think you're currently in negotiations, so you don't need to talk about negotiation strategy. So what is it that causes you to t tonight on this matter to have to have your discussion in closed session? I think people want to hear if you support or don't support certain things in this matter. They want you on record to say it in front of the cameras here. So I'd just like to offer up to you that I think it's unnecessary and might even be a foul of the law for you to go into closed session on this matter tonight. Thank you. Do you want to respond? Thank you, sir, for your testimony. Um, and then we also have uh, Joellen Kaczynski. And this is on item four from the Park Committee. State your address for us. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Jolyn Kosinski, 1861 East Shore Drive. And I'm here to speak on behalf of the neighbors that live in East Shore Circle. And it came to my attention that there's a possibility of Bay Beach buying a residential property at the end of East Shore Circle and perhaps tearing it down and it becoming a parking lot or volleyball pits or something for Bay Beach. And um, we just felt that the neighbors that are living in East Shore Circle, which is really a well-established quaint cul-de-sac, to suddenly have a house be torn down and replaced with something that would be very public is just not fair to those um, neighbors. And I'm pretty sure everyone in this room, if you had a parking lot suddenly appear on the side of your house, you probably wouldn't be happy either. So I want people to just 
uh, take that into consideration when that negotiation comes forth. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. All the way from the ninth. Um, thank you for coming and sharing your testimony. One question I did have for you, you had alluded to, I guess, you had heard that there were intended uses for that property. Yes. Um, I mean, are those just rumors circulating amongst the community, or uh, do you know the origin of those rumors? Um, I actually spoke to one of the neighbors at one time, and he talked about that there was maybe a possibility that that was going to happen. Um, it, he was very kind of nondescript about it, and I suggested, I said, oh, I said, well, maybe they're going to use it for like a, a baby office and keep it intact. So, um, but um, I, it was brought to my attention uh, via phone call that it may not, um, it might be torn down, this uh, home. Explanation. I mean, I think at this point, uh, those are rumors, and so I just want to make that that point of clarification for you. There has been no commitment to an intended use of that property. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we do have a Seth Colmer. Not clear if you like would like to speak. Great. If you could just state your address as well. East Shore Circle. Um, I am also speaking on behalf of the the property that is being purchased or intended to be purchased at the end of East Shore Circle. Um, I live three properties down um, from the current city lot that exists already. Um, most of the neighbors in the circle are extremely concerned about this, the possibility of the city taking ownership of this of this lot. We feel that it's going to devalue our homes by bringing the the park closer. Um, we're going to be losing tax revenue by taking taking a property off the market already. Um, devaluing our homes would only reduce the tax revenue to the city further. Um, additionally, we have crime problems already due to Bay Beach. There is already an established berm fence. There's a delineation between the park and and our neighborhood. There is there would be no delineation between the park and our neighborhood. Any no physical barrier between the two. We have people that trespass down our street. We've had break-ins. I had to purchase a home security system. Um, we've brought it up to city members in the past. I think the police are just taxed. I don't think they have the resources to take on what's going on at Bay Beach at the moment uh, as a possibility. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great concern to us to the point where neighbors are considering moving. Um, we're uprooting our lives due to this. I know that, there's con that there are rumors as it put, my understanding is the rumors are, origi are originating from members within inside the city themselves as people that have come up with potential ideas for what it could be. Picnic areas, sand volleyball courts, down to a parking lot. A parking lot that which would also include potentially routing a new park entrance from the end of our, from the end of our circle to the Bay Beach parking lot, which would completely disrupt our traffic patterns Already people park up and down that street freely. Um, it's diff difficult to get in and out of our driveways with that amount of parking. If you increase traffic in that area, um, it's just asking for an accident in our opinion. So thank you. Thanks for your testimony. And then finally we have John Lefebvre. Just state your address as well. Okay, 17. 1731 East Shore Circle. Um, I'm here opposing it, the uh, purchase of that property. A little background, I've lived there for 48 years and the city has made a lot of nice improvements in the park and the friends really enjoy it. Uh, it's been made into a cul-de-sac which eliminated uh, drive-through property and provided parking for 20, 30 cars for Bay Beach which has not been a problem for me. Um, the other uh, I think it made a nice walkway instead of a street connecting uh, the sanctuary to uh, uh, Bay Beach. So that's a walkway with uh, flowering trees along the side. The edge of Bay Beach Park 
has a little berm-like area with shrubbery and trees along it, which kind of separates the neighborhood. So that's very nice. Uh, the other thing uh, that I've looked into a little bit, I looked online and I looked up the Friends. And the Friends have a, there was a plan for Bay Beach that's like a 10 year plan. And there is nothing in the plan for changes to the east boundary of Bay Beach. And the plan has room for parking and more picnic areas. Uh, so I questioned the Friends in a way, I think they have on their website, they also had all the proposals and phases for Bay Beach. I thought that was very good, and I think their uh, priorities uh, and alternatives could be a little bit better. And the city also is involved in that same way, is accepting, well, the city has a little bit of expense with the uh, lost tax base and probably would have development and uh, maintenance expenses and so forth with Bay Beach. Uh, you do get the land for free from the friends, which uh, if you want free land, we have an island for you. Uh, Renard Island is Bayfront property, which of course is undesirable, but it has, it is still waterfront property that could be used for uh, walkways and park benches and such, uh, perhaps of viewing areas and picnic tables. So I think there are alternatives and my, Major objection is there's no plan. I would like to see a plan and I would like to see you not approve this until you have uh, uh, more specifics on it. And also for the same reasons I mentioned about the friends, there are alternatives, priorities, cost. Um, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. State your name and address, sir. Yes, my name is Alan Hamir at 1002 Trailwood Drive in West De Pere. I am a member of Friends of Bay Beach, and Friends of Bay Beach is in support of uh, acquisition of this property. As a member of Friends of Bay Beach, uh, one of the things that we've always said personally for me is we this is a treasure for the city. It is. It has become um, a destination for the region. Um, as, as a member of the uh, Preble Optimist Club, on the second Tuesday of every, of every August, we sponsor from 10 a.m. Till, till noon the free Zip and Pip and Ride. And so it, it's amazing the number of, of people, the number of kids, and as, as members of the Optimist Club, we talk with people and they're very thankful and they're coming in from, from all over the state uh, to, to, to experience Bay Beach. Part of what we do at, at Friends of Bay Beach is to also, I think we're, we're, we're on a track where we can keep the, uh, the price of the tickets at 75 cents. And so when I talk with people, families, when, when they say, you know, the, the Bay Beach is such a great place to take families because for a family of four, for $20, you can have a great experience, build memories, and still feed the family hot dogs and have, as I said, great fun. If you take them to the Dells, wonderful place. I've been there, I've taken my family there. Um, quite a bit more. If you take them to Six Flags, even higher. If you take them to, to uh, Walt Disney or Disney World, Epcot, it's, it's even higher. So we're landlocked and sometimes opportunities come up. And so Friends of Bay Beach, we don't dictate you know, what the parks, they get to do what they wanna do, uh, reporting to the Parks Committee and to the Council as far as you know, what they wanna do. We provide funds, and I'm hoping some of you have been out to, uh, to Bay Beach and taken a look at the, the construction of the big wheel. It's, it's, it's gonna be phenomenal. And we truly feel that it will probably generate an additional 300,000 to 400,000 attendees, new attendees, because of it. 
And so with this opportunity, it, we're, we're flexible. And those are rumors because even you know, at Friends of Bay Beach, um, at, at, the, uh, at our board meetings, th there are no specific plans for that. But I truly believe, and someone can, can uh, confirm this, but I think Bay Beach already has one of the lots. Is that, is that, is that true, Dan? We own, we own one of the lots already um, in, in, that, in that residence. So it's there. Again, we don't know what, what we'll do, but there is a, there, there was a 20 year plan uh, purchased by, by the city and all we're doing as, as our friends of Bay Beach, as business leaders, community leaders, um, interested per, people, we're gonna take that 20 year plan and we've been able to compress it to seven years to probably less than five years where Bay Beach will be able to be self-sustaining and in, in a few years, I think that extra money will then go back into the city coffers for general use. But um, you've, been, you've been generous and gracious to allow us to work with the Bay Beach staff, the Parks Committee, the Council, you know, to continue <laughs> to create Bay Beach as a wonderful, wonderful jewel in the Midwest and specifically for the city of Green Bay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Alder from the 11th. As a friend of Bay Beach, are they proposing to purchase this property and donate it to the city? Is that is that the you know, the um, at, at the last at the last uh, board meeting? Um, right now, because we we spent quite a bit for for the, for the wheel um, at the board meeting, we did say that if needed, we would Bay, friends of Bay Beach would put twenty five thousand dollars down, and if based on based on projections, uh, depending on the on the projections for the year. If it's under the projection that Friends of Bay Beach would put in another $75,000. Otherwise, we would take it you know, from the proceeds and the revenue from, from the park this year. So we are committed to, you know, to, to put some skin in the game for this. Is that, is that what you're selling us? That's, that's, what, we're, that's what we're saying. Yes, and again, it's $25,000 that, that we, we put on as a motion, and pending, pending the uh, results of, of the year, we feel that if, if it comes under their, their, their budgeted dollars, that Friends of Bay Beach would kick in another 75000 so it would be a commitment of 100000 Five million dollars for Bay Beach for the upgrade of the, the, the front of the, in other words, the sand beach and things like that. And, and they, they did it in the respect of the first five years, they had nothing to do with the payments of that, of that five million. And then uh, year six, then they'll first start making a principal payment. So Bay, Bay Beach, uh, as far as the finances, I, I think they're quite strapped at this time as far as their commitments, as far as, you know, they bonded the five million. They're gonna, they're gonna do some parking lot work and mm -hmm. they're gonna do some of the other work. So I, I think the the Bay Beach has a quite a task ahead of them as far, and I think they're still, you know, a couple years into the paying for the zip and pippin, and uh, you know, the proposal was that they bonded the five million so they could do some of these projects, but they still have to pay that five million. <coughs> yes. They still have to work on that five million and plus other debts that they do have. Yes. So I think that you know Bay Beach is not uh, out of the red. Oh, absolutely not. And, and um, again, with your generosity and uh, the commitment that uh, the the Parks Committee and the Council has done, has allowed us to to be in a position where we we will be we will be in the red. I mean, we will be in the black at at, at some point in time. Um, you know. But again, with an additional three hundred thousand um, new attendees, um, that that's why. We also did commit to uh, to several hundred thousand dollars to put in a temporary parking lot um, to to be able to park these people because in the past when we've had certain events um, there there was no parking uh, when an opportunity came up years ago uh, through a grant from the, the um, I think the, it was the EPA they said we want to give you five hundred thousand um, dollars you know for a parking lot well in the plan the parking lot was way down the road but how do you how do you take a gift of if half a million dollars? So we put that money in and put that part of that plan, you know, seven years down, down the line and, and, and put it forward. 
And so now we at least have parking spaces. And in the, in the last uh, recent years, we put the, uh, the train that's out to the west, and um, we just have plans. But again, nothing, some things are, are set in stone. And again, that, that's, the, uh, that's the park committee that's Bay Beach doing this. It's not Friends of Bay Beach. They, they kind of tell us, here's kind of what we're looking for. Can you help us out? We look at it from a business standpoint. Um, you know, is, is this profitable? You know, what, what's your plan? What's your maintenance? You know, who, are you getting multiple bids? Can we, and I know that um, some of our, our board members, they were able to negotiate um, a great price on that wheel. And I tell you what, when, that, when that's operational and that lighting package comes up, I think everyone in this room and many of the citizens of, of Green Bay is gonna, is gonna be so proud of that park. They will, they will call it, that, that's my park. I truly believe, believe that. Thank so, you very much. Thank I you. want to Any, commend you on uh, the Friends of Bay Beach, all the things that they've done for Bay Beach. I know that it's a very positive import to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Alder Thank Storer. You. Yes, sir. Okay. Thanks for coming in. Um, I've heard you speak before, and I understand what the Friends do, and we appreciate a lot of the work that you've done. I think it really just... You know, I've been talking to the alder in this district and more or less and some of the neighbors and just, you know, it's an age old thing. In fact, I had to deal with it with the clinic tonight and just talking about the neighborhood versus, you know, a project or a, or a group or something that they're dealing with. So with that being said, I, I'm not against, you know, a lot of what Bay Beach represents and, and the tourist draw and all that, but I am concerned a little bit about the neighborhood as well. So. We, um, Maybe when we get out of closed session, I'd like to talk to Director Ditchite about this as well and just try to maybe get a little more background on this. I realize I, I missed committee, but I just want to get a little more clarification. Yeah. But I just wanted to let you know that I, my concern also is with the neighborhood as well and uh, just to make sure that you know, that works a little bit as well. Yeah, and like I said, uh, Friends of Bay Beach, we're always gonna be there to support the park. So whatever this governing body decides, um, we're, we're still gonna be there to to help the park however we can. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. All right. Entertain a motion to close. close the floor. Motion made to close the floor by Alder from the 7th, seconded by Alder from the 3rd. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed nay. The ayes have it. Uh, the floor is closed. Um, so the following items have been noticed for closed session, items Q4, V1, and U6. So we will take these items together. For Committee of the Whole, we will be taking up the notices of decision from the U.S. Department of Interior regarding the intent to take land into trust, and item 6 from the finance report pertaining to initiating negotiations for intergovernmental agreement with the United Nations, including revisiting the following notices of decision from the U.S. Department of Interior regarding the intent to take land into trust and the parcels identified. For item Q4, we'll be considering purchase of 1705 East Shore Circle, parcel 21-439 for the expansion of Bay Beach Amusement Park. I will entertain a motion uh, to move into closed session. Second. Motion made by Alder from the 1st, seconded by Alder from the 7th. Oh, uh, excuse me. Alder from the 12th. Yes, uh, I would like to ask for separation. I, I am in favor of closed session for the, the park item, not in favor of closed session for the other items I'd like to ask the city attorney to provide what she is able to in closed session for the sake of public notice and I'd like to vote on, on whether to enter into closed session for those two items in concern to fee to trust land <coughs> I don't know how that has to, how that happens but I'd like to ask for separation so we can vote on going into closed session on the two items okay. specific to fee to trust Making a motion to separate the items. Seconded by Alder from the 8th. All in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed nay. Alder from the 7th. Okay. Uh, I would like, I, there were, if I'm not mistaken, there are, um, concerning the Oneida, there are items that are in litigation that we need to take in closed session. So I would. Right. Well, I don't know how that might spill over, and certainly once we come out, anything that did spill over, we can divulge in open session. But I, I would like to take them all into closed session, 
to cover our bases to make sure that if we need to speak freely, uh, we can. So I would prefer we uh, take this all in closed session and when we come out, we can separate and talk, uh, put everything that needs to go into open session into point, open point session. Order, Mr. Mayor, I think we just yeah. voted on Yeah, we could, or just a point of clarification, it was a motion to, to separate the items for, a, to vote separately on the items to move into closed session? Chavez. Okay, so if we are going to separate this um, into two votes, what we're really doing is is going into closed session once and then coming back out and going into closed session a second time. Um, so if that's what you guys want to do, that is what you are voting on right now. If you want to go in once and discuss everything, then we're doing it all at once. All from the eighth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, let's just handle the parks item. We're, we're dragging that item into a much bigger discussion. Let's handle that one first, resolve it, and then come back and discuss the much more in-depth item that could take us quite a while yet. So let's just handle the parks item. I think that's what Alderman from the 12th was trying to get to. Let's just handle that item. Okay. okay. And then come back. And So the motion has been made to go into closed session for item Q4. That's the parks one, right? Seconded, uh, motion made by Alder from the 8th, seconded by Alder from the 9th to move into closed session uh, regarding item Q4. There we go. Will Alder from the 8th read sure, the language? definitely. The council may convene in closed session pursuant to sections 19.85, section 1, subsection E, Wisconsin statutes for purposes of deliberating or negotiating the sale of public properties, investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business as necessary for competitive or bargaining reasons. The council may thereafter reconvene in open session pursuant to section 19.82, section 2, Wisconsin statutes to report the results of the closed session and consider the balance of the agenda. All right, please use the board to vote. And we're voting on the motion to go into closed session for item Q4. Motion passes on a vote of 10 to 2. We are in closed session. So we are back in open session and on item four from the park committee. What are your wishes regarding this item? I would move that um, we proceed as discussed in closed session with the understanding that um, the final offer would come back with a uh, concept plan for that site. Yeah, that would go through parks and council. Yeah. Okay. Wait, what? Yeah, before it's developed. Okay, motion has been made. Did you capture all that? Yeah. <laughs> Seconded by Alder from the first. Um, all those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay? No. No. You guys have it. Motion has been adopted. And now we're on Committee of the Whole. And we will be taking up. Notices of decision from the U.S. Department of Interior regarding the intent to take land into trust. And item six from the finance report pertaining to initiating negotiations for intergovernmental agreement with the United Nation, including revisiting the notices of decision from the U.S. Department of Interior regarding the intent to take land into trust on the parcels identified. I will entertain a motion to move into closed session. Second. Motion made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the tenth to move into closed session. For agenda items uh, V1 and U6, will Alder 10 please read the closed session language? Uh, Mayor, like oh, to, do you want to read that? No, no. I, I just want to. Okay. 
It's it is a roll call vote. Is Alder from the 10th. Okay. The council may convene in closed session pursuant to section 19.851G Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the governmental body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is or is likely to become involved. The council may therefore reconvene an open session pursuant to section 19.852 Wisconsin statutes to report the results of the closed session and consider the balance of the agenda. Other from the 12th. Thank you, Mayor. For the sake of public information prior to going into the vote for closed session, wondering if the city attorney can, can provide some comments on on the situation we are in and anything that could be uh, important to the, the public that I could point to them uh, to this meeting so they could have some information. A summary. Attorney Chavez. I, I'm not sure there's much we can discuss in open session without the, the council waiving privilege. I mean, we, we are in, in active litigation on a number of items and the the direction we ultimately decide to go in is, is this council's privilege. Like, uh, for example, the properties that are in the status that they're in, can we state what property taxes uh, are currently being collected? Is that something that could be disclosed here or completely within closed session? Um, no, I would say that's still part of the, the decision to, to go, that, that would be part of the, the rationale as to why or to or to not go into, into litigation. I, that, that's really something that, that should be discussed as part of closed session. Now, what, what could I if for constituents who are concerned about this situation or uh, for me to do my duty as an elected official to inform people, what do you recommend that I could share with them that would alert them to a situation that the city is discussing affecting their neighborhood. I'm not trying to lead you on to an answer. I just I legitimately want to know because up until this point, because every discussion and potentially this discussion is occurring behind closed doors, I have absolutely no way to inform the the public who I represent. Who and I take that oath of office very seriously. I, I think by proceeding consistently in closed session, I am undermining my position to to inform people of things occurring within their their community to which they pay taxes and deserve representation. So again, I, what, what can I say at this point to constituents who are inquiring? I would refer them to the notice of decisions that we received. Those are public record and those are what you are ultimately deciding whether to appeal or not. Um, but the discussion regarding anything pertaining to um, the basis for it, that that is privileged Attorney client privileged. An elected representative of the people. Yeah, sorry. The council as a whole is the is the client. No individual alder, no individual individual elected official um, is the owner of the privilege. The council as a whole is the owner. And so with that, the only entity that can waive privilege is the council as a whole. That means that this council has to take a vote saying that they want to release that information. I'm going to strongly uh, recommend the council to vote no to closed session, not because I'm trying to be difficult, but to the point that, that the public does not know, and we're really handcuffing the council up to this point, whether it's, it, I don't think it was purposeful. I, I just think it's circumstance that I am handcuffed as an elected person, that consistently we are faced with a situation that I, I can't inform my constituents, and I, I think that goes against everything that I believe in as an elected person. I understand there are situations where we need to discuss things in closed session. I'm not a rookie when it comes to this sort of stuff. I understand there's a, a need for it. But in this situation, a uh, year in uh, to this term isn't the city council, the public needs to know. And, and I, I just can't in good conscience vote to go into closed session when there is some information that we can share here in open session that at least allows people to, to, to 
be aware of the situation because right now, quite honestly, they're not. And I could refer them to the notice of decision to place land into trust, um, but that is a, a, a several page document and without any proper you know, reference, any you know, guidance from the legal department of what the follow-up questions and what those answers will be, um, I think we're doing a great disservice to the public. So the council can vote how they choose to, but I'm gonna vote very strongly against going into closed session. I think the more sunlight this thing has, the better. Uh, the more the public is informed of the situation, the better. And then they deserve to be part of this communication as we go forward, as well as the Oneida Nation. I don't want to exclude them. That's the whole point of my other motion was that we need to reframe how we communicate this and we need to inform the public and involve them because it affects them on a very deep personal level. So with that, I'm going to highly recommend we vote against going into closed session. Thank you. Thank you. Holder from the 8th. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in discussing why we might or might not go into closed session here, this is such an intricate issue. You know, I'd, it takes a while to really understand it. And I'm sure the public out there, 99%, really have no idea what, what we're even talking about. So I'm just going to go over a little bit here as a quick recap of why we may or may not want to go into closed session. And it's really all public knowledge, or should be. Um, when a tribe, and in our instance, the United Tribe, wants to um, have a parcel of property put into federal trust, they petition the Bureau of Indian Affairs, correct? So correct me if I'm wrong on anything here, Vanessa, but it's at that point uh, the city has 30 days to just file a, an objection. And we say, hey, we object. And then at that point it goes to the Bureau of Indian, Bureau of Indian Affairs, and they evaluate the application, keeping in mind that we're objecting. Now, it's been, I think, our experience and, and the surrounding communities that almost 100% of the time, 99.9, .9, the Bureau of Indian Affairs um, approves it. They send a notice of decision, an NOD saying you know, they're going to take it into trust. And it's at that point the city can once again, and this is probably the more costly point because it gets a little more involved, can say, hey, we object. You know, Once again, we object. Um, then from there it goes to the IBIA, which is the Interior Board of Indian Appeals. And it's been our experience, and I think neighboring experiences uh, specifically, that they don't make a decision on it. They, they basically send it back down to the BIA, to the Bureau of Indian Affairs, and say, hey, you got to relook at this. Well, and it sits there. And it's been you know, theorized that... Uh, that the Bureau of Indian Affairs doesn't want to make a decision because they want the uh, federal government legislatively to fix it or the Supreme Court to fix it. And those things aren't happening, so these appeals sit. Now what's important with that is these uh, parcels, we get tax revenue. Not only us, but the county, the school, and NWTC. It pays for all those school things, the county things. It pays for garbage pickup. It pays for snow plowing, police, and fire. And when they come off the tax roll, they still get those services. And I think that's what we're seeing right now. So many parcels are off there that we're, we're a quarter of a million dollars or more in the hole. And we're providing services. So at some point, something's got to break. And that's why we're trying to get some kind of an agreement. Now, Hobart's has the experience that they appeal these and they get to the Bureau of Indian Affairs, and they sit there. And guess what? You get to collect taxes. They've been collecting taxes on some properties for 10, 15 years while it just sits in limbo. Really? <coughs> so that's part of our discussions here is do we keep appealing this up through that process? And because a tie is a win. You know, uh, unless we're willing to pretty much fund all of the services in the future, for that part of the city, which I'm sure the rest of the city is going to say um, no, <laughs> that's part of the, the discussion that we're having, right? I mean, we, we reached kind of a loggerhead with the previous administration, and I admire you trying to reach out and say, hey, it's got to be an amicable way to do this. But you got to see the entire process and what's at stake here. And it's, it's pretty inclusive. It, I, I think with Judge Griesbach's ruling now, he's pretty much said that we retain our rights to um, impose our um, zoning and planning guidelines right you know so that we can treat all properties you know the same so you don't have one property with long grass and the house is falling apart and the next one's pristine because that causes commotion in the neighborhoods 
just causes grief on, on everybody's part. So there's a lot to this, but uh, I think more needs to be public. People need to understand it's not just that simple of, because what's been asked for, I think, on, on the other side in the past has been more than just a service agreement. It really should be just billing them for service. Here, we're providing all these things, police, fires, snow removal, garbage pickup. Bill them every month. Say, here, we're providing this, you know. As a good neighbor, you'd think they'd like, all right, yeah, you are providing all these things, you know, we'll pay you. It's those extra things that is usually what's cluttering it up. So I'm, I'm opposed to going to closed session right now because this does need to be discussed more in open session, truthfully. Thanks. Thanks, Alder. Alder from the 7th. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I would rather discuss in closed session because we will be covering uh, areas that are being litigated. And when we come out, any area that we talked about in closed session that is uh, can be revealed openly, we then take up that discussion openly and, review and talk to the public about what we can talk about. I think to talk now openly and not being able to talk about uh, areas that we're litigating uh, and may inhibit these discussions. I think we need to go in closed session, discuss freely, figure out what needs to stay closed and what we can come back out and discuss openly. So I, I support going into closed session. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder from the first. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, and, th and, and thank you, Alder Weary. That was a really good explanation. I enjoyed listening to it. Um, the, the only thing I wanted I'm a little confused about is that is a tie is a win that could be true for future ones but we've heard so many are already in trust that we aren't getting any money for right so I'm hoping you know that when we talk about this that we'll come to some kind of a way or agreement where we could get some funding for those ones that already aren't paying taxes that was just the one step further I wanted to talk about Thank you. Any other comments? So um, we have a motion on the table to uh, to move into closed session. All in favor will signify by voting aye. Yeah, by voting aye. Yeah, I'm. Saying You're just telling us. I'm, I'm saying that. <laughs> <laughs> By voting aye, those opposed will vote no. Use the board. Seven. Yeah. We have seven no votes, five yes votes. Motion fails. So we are open. From the 12th. So I have an idea, um, again, with respect to the fact that there is some things that we should not share publicly for the reasons the city attorney mentioned, and I am very aware of that uh, despite my vote. So on the issue of which one can I discuss first, Mayor, Did, can I discuss the one the, the one that appeared before the finance committee? Yeah. Okay, if I could just Go simply ahead. make a, a motion, and it's a, it's a kind of a long motion, but I think it fits our purpose. A motion to initiate negotiations for a fee for municipal services a, agreement with the Oneida Nation with a monthly report provided by Mayor Genrich to the city council. And the second part is for the revisiting of the following notices of decision from the U.S. Department of the Interior regarding the intent to take land into trust for the properties of Kufel, Bruss, Syndercar, Kolb, Kelly, Howie, Duquesne, Cornelius, Kestel, Baumgart, Orlando, and Debendetto to be referred back to the Finance Committee with the property addresses listed within the agenda item 
to serve as proper public notice. I can repeat that again. I know it was a long motion, but I think it allows me to get the, the one part back to Finance Committee, which we can go into closed session, and I can personally be there. I, I, Mayor, I was not able to attend the, the meeting at the Finance Committee. I was only made aware of it the day before, and it happens, I understand, but then I can be there for that, for that part of the discussion, but I really, truly do want you to move forward with uh, negotiations for a fee for municipal services agreement with Oneida. So I think that that's a that's a good motion. It gets us through this without having to share too much uh, in open session. That would compromise our position as a city. Is that one motion? Now one motion. If I could, do you want me to repeat it again? Just one second, Attorney Chavez. To be clear, the conversation should still be happening. It's just an open session now. So. Essentially, this council voted to go ahead and have this discussion in open session and, and waive that confidence. Yep. I, I, I agree with you completely. The, the whole point, the, the, what I want mostly out of this, one is public information. And when I read my statement, you know my, my heart, my intent is not to be divisive and to create trouble, but simply to inform the public. And we need to give... The credits that the public some credit that they truly understand it they're they don't have information and I can't share that because of issues within closed session so it it serves that purpose the second part that it serves is that it allows the mayor to move forward with negotiations and it allows us to discuss the the, the latter part on on the 12 properties uh, at Finance Committee so then I can be there Alder Chavez All right. Attorney Chavez sorry let me clarify. When, by not going into closed session, what you agreed to do was have the discussion here in open session. So the conversation should still take place. Otherwise, it should have just been a motion to refer back. Um, but now you literally are able to discuss all of that information in open session. We're not holding anything back. We've decided to waive our, our right to confidentiality. So, there, so to clarify, anything that you're saying you can't release because it is confidential, that's not the case anymore. Okay. That's understood. But I'm what I'm saying is I have a motion on the floor. I'm assuming hopefully it gets second. And then I think it's a good motion. It gets us, it allows the mayor to move forward with negotiations and allows the finance committee to meet in closed session at that time to discuss in a more appropriate setting. So there's four members of that committee, myself, I will be there and I can ask some questions and provide some guidance to the mayor um, in a committee setting that has been my experience. So we can discuss it, we can continue, I, I could care less, but my point is that I think it's a valid motion and it's on the floor and we can discuss that. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Um, Alder, can you read your motion again? Yeah, I was going to. I was going to provide it to the city clerk. So the motion is to initiate negotiations for a fee for municipal services agreement with the Oneida Nation with a monthly report provided by Mayor Genrick to the city council and for the revisiting of the following notices of decision from the U.S. Department of the Interior regarding the intent to take land into trust for the properties of Kufel, Bruss, Syndergaard, Kolb, Kelly, Howie, Duquesne, Cornelius, Kestel, Baumgart, Orlando, and Devin Nendetto be referred back to the Finance Committee with the property addresses listed within the agenda item to serve as proper public notice. Alder from the 8th. Do you have lights on here? I would be in favor of that motion. Um, I think we have to remember. I hope everybody, I passed out the flow chart. Everybody, really, if you get a chance, study it. Um, Go ahead and talk to you know representatives from surrounding communities who've dealt with this. Um, Alderman Sladek has dealt for it a number of years and has an extensive wealth of knowledge on it. And, and remember, you know, we, we do we want to be good neighbors, obviously, but our job is to look out for the interests of the citizens of Green Bay. And and we can see obviously we're providing services up the wazoo, and we're not getting reimbursed. And so we need to work that out and take out all those extra things. And um, that's what needs to be discussed. Thanks. Thanks, Alder. Uh, Alder from the ninth. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, quest two questions, actually, for Attorney Chavez. Um, the first is, does referral of this back to the Finance Committee in any way compromise our ability to meet any deadlines with that process? Yes. So there are two. The one, one of the things that came out of the closed session last time 
Um, again, we are having this discussion. There's no way for us to have this. So my, my other question is, for this, does it preclude us in any way from having that conversation in closed session at the Finance Committee, or does the vote that we just took obligate us to maintaining this discussion in, in open session? It is a very sticky position, but I think that we have waived our, our right to go into closed session. Motion to reconsider. Were you in the majority, Alder? I will entertain a motion to reconsider. I, other from, from the ninth, I believe, still has the floor. Well, okay. Um, so you answered my second question. I guess my first one is if we if this gets referred back to committee, we will miss deadlines to appeal. There are two deadlines that um, I, I feel we need to address. The first is whether we are going to incur additional costs, and the second is whether or not we are going to object. We have 30 days to object um, on the new ones that arrived today, and I believe the deadline on those separate, will not. That's a separate agenda. That's a separate agenda, and we don't need to we don't need to you know mix these two together. That this is the, my preferred motion and agenda. I think it's an appropriate motion, and then we can go into closed session on the other uh, the two new ones. We need a motion to separate because we have to make a motion to put them together, right? Alder from the ninth has the floor. Vanessa, if you could just. Simple answer, when is that deadline? A date. Well, let me, in fact, even aside from that, would we have time to call a special meeting if needed for that committee to take that action up? I didn't put us here. She's getting it. I just want, I want answers. I want to know what our options are. It's the day we receive it. So we received one on the 20th, and another one, I believe, on the, shoot, it's either the 16th or 17th for one of them. This, the 20th on the other, and so t we have 30 days from that. Okay, so, we, so if we were to support the motion as is, and the Finance Committee needed to call a special meeting, we have enough time to do that. Well, then it's still going to come back here. All right. Sorry. But we have that option. Unless you call a special meeting. Just watch the crosstalk here. Look, I guess all I wanted was an answer. I mean, we do have that. We do have enough time to call special meetings if this body were to, you know, were to need that. So my point is supporting this motion. Finance Committee wants to call a special meeting to take that on so that we can address those issues in a timely manner. They can do that. And then I presume, Mayor, is it up to you to call a special council meeting if you deem that necessary? I'm not sure what the process is for that. For a majority? Okay. To clarify, we do not have enough time to, to have council again for one of the items. further Alder from the ninth so we, we don't have enough time to provide proper notification to have those two meetings when, when is that deadline 
so to have a council meeting without calling a new one, we do not have time. We would have to call a new council meeting. Yes, we can do those within, within that time period. Alder from the 12th. I, I'm not trying to be difficult. I, I don't think we've compromised our position. I don't think we tipped our hand. We haven't done anything. All I'm asking to have done is for, for some public information to be out there, and that's what we've done. Regarding the two properties that have come in since uh, since the Finance Committee met, we can go into closed discuss, uh, closed session on those two. I don't know if we've made a motion, if these been have been combined. I really don't know at this point. but. But, my, but the main point that I'm trying to make is that, that the mayor will have our permission as a council to move, move forward. We all know that that's very important. It's just some of the properties going into trust status we need to look at a little closer. We need to have more discussion on that. I don't think we necessarily have to discuss it here. That's why I want to refer back to finance. And then the other agenda item uh, on the two properties, I'm fine with going into the closed session on those because of the timeliness of it all. Um, but but I, I don't see the, the timing of the other other 12. I, I really don't. The, the motion uh, that was discussed at finance was that we would revisit. When you revisit something, you basically resurrect it. It was a done and settled issue. We're revisiting that. So, so to discuss the revisiting, that would be more appropriate at the finance committee, which I would be, like to be a part of. That's all, simple. Absolutely simple. I understand that there's a timing issue. We can separate this and go into closed session on those two. I'm perfectly fine with that. Attorney Chavez. There would have to be a reconsideration because the vote, the request, the, the vote to go into closed session was on those two items combined. They're both in the majority. Point of clarification. Does the person making the motion or can anyone make a motion separate? Uh, once it's on the floor, it's anybody can make a motion regarding it. Now, one thing I do want to clarify, though, is there there seems to be some confusion as to whether or not we send this back and we're entitled to go into closed session um, in in finance. And what we discussed here, what I'm what I'm telling you is, I don't think we'll be able to go into closed session on this item anymore. Not just for tonight, not just a council, but anymore to discuss this litigation. Because once we have gone down the road of waiving our right to go into closed session to protect it, the, the, the privilege lasts only until it's been waived. And, and it is my opinion that that is what we did tonight. Any further comments on this item? Alder from the third. Thank you, Mayor. It's our attorney's opinion. I say we move forward and vote on this and have a special meeting. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. We could get some clarification at the time if we can go in closed session in the meantime, but let's move forward. Uh, apparently, we have a motion on the floor, so let's vote on it. The other separate issues we can deal with um, that District 12 suggested. But let's move forward with, with the, the motion on the floor. Let's vote on it, up or down. I call the vote. And then our city attorney can get clarification because she thinks her opinion, she needs clarification. We need to know. And we have time for that. Well, let's just move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Looking for the speakers here, sorry. Computer. Are there any further comments? Yeah, I can't see the screen, so. Um, Alder from the seven. Yes, Chair. Well, the problem with moving forward is we are putting ourselves at risk. If we move forward and we wave. I called for the vote. There's no discussion. We vote on it. Yes, he can. He can ask the question. Yes, I can. I can. And I, I didn't know you asked the question. Yes, I, did. I didn't. Right. That, it's getting a little late. I'm getting delirious. Well, that makes a difference. Okay, the question. Please help me out. 
all in all in favor of the motion will uh, will vote aye. And use the board here. All opposed will will vote nay. Wait, what is the, what is the, use the motion, motion again? again. No, 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 no. We're voting on whether or not the question. That's Robert's rules. We're going to vote on do we accept oh. him calling the question. That's what we have to do. Okay. And we can vote no or no. Right, Attorney? Yes. Is it just a point of clarification for Attorney Chavez? Is that a simple majority vote for calling the question? So those in, in favor of calling the question will vote aye on the board. <clears throat> those opposed will vote nay. Two-thirds vote is required um, you can vote. to call the you question. Can vote, yes. you can vote. We are able to Got, uh, all the from the eighth and ninth not recording here. I didn't know if they were voting yet. Yeah. This is just to call the question. Correct. This is not the question. <coughs> Correct. District five. So no, mine would. Here's one you work. It, it's in. Oh, it did. We have seven nays, five ayes. The, the uh, calling the question fails. Then, Your Honor, may I have the floor? Alder from the seventh. Yes. Uh, to vote on this now in open session, there is risk going forward because we've waived privilege. And if we going forward now, there is no privilege attached to this at all anymore. And if we, uh, I think we definitely need to separate before we go any further to make sure that we don't lose the privilege on the other two. Uh, I would recommend that we go into closed session on everything, have our discussion, and anything that can be discussed openly can then be dealt with. This is reckless. We are putting ourselves at risk here. If we lose this privilege and accidentally or, or carelessly or thinking we're doing something else and we're doing Well, I, I don't know what else to say. I, I believe the responsible thing to do is to go into closed session, have our discussion, decide what we can share openly, and then do that. To do this backwards is putting ourselves at risk of losing privilege and making our life very difficult down the road. It's irresponsible. Thank you. All there from the 12th? No, I, that was a mistake. All there from the 8th? Nobody was going anywhere for a while, right? <laughs> I'm making a motion to reconsider. Second. Motion's been made to reconsider. Second, our motion's been made by the Alder from the 8th, seconded by Alder from the 9th to reconsider the previous motion. All in favor? Session motion. Yeah. 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 Aye. All in favor will vote aye. All opposed nay? No. Okay. Aye. <laughs> aye. All in favor will went, vote aye. 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 All opposed nay? We can use the board. Okay. Needs a little more fleshing out before we take a step forward. Nine I votes, three nay votes. The motion to reconsider is successful. Entertain a motion. So the, the previous motion should be on the floor, correct, to go into closed session? Yes. Okay. And it's not my intent to stifle any kind of information. Obviously not. I spoke quite a bit on it. But I do not want to hamper our future ability. And I think if we go into closed session and stick to just this and come back out, we can proceed. Thanks. Do need to read Okay. The motion's been made to go into closed session by Alder from the 8th. Do we have second. a second? Second by Alder from the 7th. All in favor uh, will vote aye. On the board, <clears throat> those opposed will vote no.
Nine votes aye, three votes nay. The motion is successful. We are in closed session. And we are back in open session. Um, I will entertain a motion, uh, Alder from the fourth. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I would uh, make a motion that staff proceed as directed in closed session. Second. Motion's been made by Alder. Wait, wait, wait. Motion by Alder from the first, second by Alder from the second to move into open session. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed nay. The ayes have it. Uh, Alder from the fourth again. Yeah, I'll make a motion that uh, staff proceed as directed in closed session. Second. Alder from the fourth has made a motion to proceed as directed in closed session. It's been seconded by the Alder from the second. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed nay. The, the ayes have it. Uh, Alder from the twelfth. On, I believe now we're on the policy and protection item nine. I'd like to make a motion to refer to city attorney. Second. Motion has been made to refer to city attorney by Alder from the 12th, seconded by Alder from the 4th. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed nay. The ayes have it. And we are on. What was that, that closed session? No. Nay. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. We're on ordinance. Ordinance is first reading. I'll entertain a motion to advance items one through four to a second reading. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alder from the third, seconded by Alder from the seventh to advance. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and those have been advanced to the final reading. Referral of petitions and communications. Any communications? Uh, Alder from the sixth. Um, yes, this will go to the park board, I believe. Um, as the park department has no policy on notification of residents neighbor, slash neighbors of major additions, alterations that would directly affect them, I'm therefore asking for a policy ordinance put in place. Very good. Alder from the 8th. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we'll go to Parks. I believe Parks has a uh, jurisdiction over city, city Hall. So discuss how to enable free Wi-Fi access or increased bandwidth during all city committee and council meetings. Thank you, Alder. Alder from the 10th. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this is the traffic bicycle and pedestrian. To look at the feasibility of left turn caution arrows along Military Avenue lights between Shano Avenue and Mason Streets. Thanks, Alder. Alder from the 12th. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, to improvement in services for public works to provide an up-to-date account of revenue and expenditures of the wheel tax. Thank you, Alder. Alder from the first. This is, uh, both of these are to plan commission. First, to incorporate the findings of the analysis of impediments to fair housing into the comprehensive plan. And secondly, to research and create a fair housing ordinance for the city of Green Bay. Thank you, Alder. Alder from the third. Thank you, Mayor. This is on the behalf of a concerned constituent of District 3. Bear with me. I am requesting, the constituent who's very concerned in District 3, is requesting that in appreciation of Guy Zima's 40 years of service to the city, to the Green Bay City Council and Brown County Board of Supervisors, that Spring Street between Monroe and Madison be renamed Guy Zima Lane. Thank you, Alder. Alder from the fourth. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Thank you, Your Honor. I don't normally have too many, but indulge me tonight, I, uh, I do. Uh, improvement in services, I want to report on the timeline of who no knew what, when, from city employees as it pertained to the reporting of the flood from March 14th. And from that information, I want staff to develop an early warning system for man-made and natural disasters to help our citizens have as much time as possible to preserve life and property in the future. Again, for improvement in services, I want IT to study the ongoing issues with the Civic Clerk Program and report on fixes for it. 
Improvement in services, I'd like an update on the plan that I requested, I think over a year ago, to bring our sidewalks up to code, and I wanna know when that will be ready. Oh, and I have one more, I'm sorry. And this is for protection policy, a procedure for alders to be notified when petitions and communications are going to be addressed at the committee level. I, I think I've been pretty good on some of my requests. I haven't been bothering staff on it or harassing them or anything. And I'm just afraid sometimes this stuff gets lost in the traces. I've been on a few committees where alders don't show up and I think it's because maybe time, it takes a while for stuff to come forward and they just lose it in the, in the minutia that goes on. So thank you. Thanks Alder. Alder from the 11th. Alder Van Rooy. Alder from the 9th. That's for the traffic commission to address chronic complaints regarding speeding on 12th Avenue. Clerk, do you have any late communications? I do not. Okay. Just one that I would like to clarify. Um, I don't know that the civic clerk should be sent to INS. I'm sorry, which one? Uh, uh, civic clerk. clerk. That's not the finance. I mean, the, what is, the, what that IT, makes the most sense. Who does IT answer to? Thank you. Anybody, anybody? Fine. Finance. Yeah. Finance. That's what I thought. Yeah. Clerk, any late communications? No, I do not. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to refer all petitions motion. and communications. So moved. Sorry. Motions <laughs> made by Alder from the third, seconded by Alder from the first, to refer all petitions and communications to the proper authority. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and those petitions and communications have been referred. Aye. Motion to adjourn, made by Alder from the seventh, seconded by Alder from the first. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed, nay. Aye. The ayes have it. We're adjourned. Aye.